computer. Okay. Okay. Then, already now we start our session. <clears throat> and let me remind you the time frame of this section. Uh, 15 minutes for each report, including answering questions. And uh, we will include only uh, climate reports to the materials of the conference. Everybody knows, I, I think. Yes, I see that somebody said first reporter, Taras Lindyuk, yes. said that has problem with speakers and uh, who will re make report. Do you trust ready to make report or not? I listen to Taras Linduk. Speakers uh, cannot listen. Okay. One moment, please. I will answer him to chat. Okay, uh, then first report should be Miroslav Komar, Oleg Savenko, Anatoly Sachenko, Taras Lindyu, Kristina Lipianina, Honcharenko, Grigory Gladi, and Nadia Vasilki. Somebody present from this list of participants? Nobody? We will wait, maybe later they will. Mm, connect to our session. Next, Mikola Barano and Yuri Scherbina. Hi. Uh, here, Mikola Barano. Uh, his report, application of metric learning to large scale image classification task. Please share your screen and uh, you have a voice. Could you please uh, let me share my screen? Because uh, Okay, message okay. was disabled at anti screen sharing. Please try. Yeah, now it works. Yeah. Do you see my presentation? Uh, not yet. Mm. Only has started screen sharing. And, uh, mm, okay, now, now exist. Yes. Yeah, just delay. Uh, so, hello everyone. I'm Nicola Barano from Ivan Franco National University. And today I'm glad uh, to present my work toward application of metric learning to large scale image classification task. So, first of all, let's recap how traditional uh, approaches for image classification works. Usually, the task is solved uh, by involving a uh, end to end model which uh, usually consists of feature extraction part and feature classification part. So having a large scale uh, annotated data sets, we are able to train that model in uh, using end-to-end -end manner just by uh, backward propagation. So uh, after training on inference uh, time, using one forward pass, we are able to predict an input image or input sample. And that works well in most cases but training of such models requires uh, a large scale annotated data sets. Actually, say, such data sets exist like ImageNet or uh, Open Images data set. But despite the existence of such large scale data sets, 
a lot of uh, and numerous of existed classes are still uncovered. And obviously it is not impossible, it is, it's, it is not impossible to collect a large scale data sets for a lot of business cases. Uh, consider a um, cashless checkout in retail and objects are usually changed in day by day and it is impossible to collect large scale data sets every day and retrain model. So here we will uh, talk about uh, few shot uh, learning, few shot learning for image classification and especially about metric learning. In contrast to traditional approach, metric learning is involved to work with uh, only feature extractor. And our task is to train such feature extractor to extract embedding for features from input images in such a way to be distinguishable between different classes. So it means that if we uh, extract embedded from two images with the same uh, with the same picture in doc in our case, it, uh, extracted embedding should be similar in some uh, metric space. So uh, comparing uh, a distance between two embeddings, we are able to predict are these images similar or not. Usually it is uh, done by a uh, triplet loss driven model. Triplet loss is actually uh, the most famous approach to train semis networks. And this loss is, uh, it deals with three inputs called anchor, positive and negative sample. So anchor is just a random sample from our data sets, positive another random sample from data sets, but should be exactly the same class as an anchor sample. And negative should be, uh, well, could be any sample except uh, uh, anchor classes. So calculating distance between anchor to positive and anchor to negative, our goal is to minimize difference between this distance plus some hyperparameter called margin. Uh, this hyperparameter is controlled how far uh, our embeddings should be uh, located between uh, different classes and the same classes. So application of such triplet, uh, triplet loss driven model is widely uh, known for individual recognition tasks like face recognition or uh, even uh, dolphin dorsal fin recognition, so that's competition from Kaggle platform. And it is uh, working with such loss uh, allow us to type the same samples in terms of classes and distinct and to, to separate different samples. But working with uh, daily objects is not well investigated yet. So in our work, we are focused on a large scale of daily object classification. And we were focused on uh, FSS 1000 data sets. It uh, uh, includes uh, uh, 1,000 classes, and it is designed especially to be perfect balanced in terms of classes, as well as in terms of class biases. So, for example, in contrast to ImageNet dataset, which includes uh, more than 100 dog breeds, uh, there are no biases between classes in FSS 1,000 datasets. Originally, the data sets were, uh, was created for image segmentation purpose, but it was created in such a way to, uh, to preserve only one object of one class per image. So thus, we are able to crop our objects using uh, mass segmentation, and thus we uh, will work with image classification task on perfectly balanced data sets. Our observation uh, tell us that uh, all objects are almost rectangle and fill uh, more than 80% of image area. So here are example of cropped images that we are going to work with. Uh, we decided to build a triplet driven uh, loss model uh, in order to investigate how such uh, models uh, could be applicable to uh, image large-scale image classification task. We decided to use efficient NetP2 as our backbone model, followed by embedding layer. It's actually a fully connected layer of size uh, 256 
its uh, uh, dimension of our binding to be extracted. On top of that, we add uh, L2 normalization layer in order to keep a scale of our embeddings. We train our model uh, on uh, FSS cropped FSS 1000 datasets, split it per classes. We used only seven images per train, and the rest were used for validation purpose. We trained our model uh, using two stages. On the first stage, we just uh, freeze a weapon model to keep uh, weights of the bond model, uh, model healthy and just fine tune a fully connected layer. After that, we unfreeze and train the whole model till the end. After training, we calculate and uh, extract an embeddings from our datasets and calculate distances between a lot of pairs. And here you can observe a histogram of, the, of such distances between uh, positive samples and uh, negative pairs. Positive pairs is just a pair of images with the same class, and negative is a pair of images with different classes. So you may observe that all distances are almost normally distributed, except uh, some outliers uh, on the beginning. It corresponds for the very similar images, for example, images of car, of the same car like, um, taking picture with the same point of view. So obviously, the, the, those images are very similar. And also on this histogram, you might observe that uh, such distances are perfectly uh, distinguishable. So we just use a also thresholding to find a perfect threshold to uh, classify uh, if given distance give us um, contact that uh, given images are the same or not. Thus, uh, we have we obtain a true positive rate more than 92% and true negative rate almost 100%. It is a metric for just a binary classification to decide whether the object is similar or not. But we are actually interested in image classification task. So we uh, decide to use a Kanye's name classifier model on top of our embeddings. In our experiments, we use uh, seven nearest neighbors. That uh, uh, number was evaluated during cross validation. And such model helped us to uh, find the most similar embeddings through the other database. And our embedding database was calculated uh, based on trained data. Thus, we obtained a top one uh, accuracy uh, within the 1000 classification task, uh, up to 83% accuracy, which give us a more than 10% accuracy boost in comparison with uh, vanilla efficient net V2. What about top five accuracy? It uh, almost uh, 96% accuracy, which also beat an efficient net V2. So our experiments show that uh, uh, such few shot uh, classification model uh, might be easily applied to large scale data sets, the, despite the semantic of objects. And moreover, it is easy to extend a new classes by just adding, uh, uh, by extending uh, our database in which Canon is looking for the similar embeddings. Thus, we are able to extend our model to classify any novel classes just without retraining and no overhead in terms of uh, computational resources and data collection and data annotation. So thank you for attention. Yeah, I will glad. I would like to glad to answer you to any questions. Thank you very much. Um, have anybody questions to the reporter? No questions. I have one question. Um, <clears throat> this method to use uh, some uh, metric learning. Uh, how, how is method names? Your method. Um, actually, metric learning is uh, just a subset of few short uh, learning. 
And uh, generally, uh, future learning is focused to train model using just a few of data. For example, few samples, maybe one, two, three. And metric learning uh, or any uh, other future learning is just a subset of future learning. And metric learning is involved to uh, train a, a, such operator to calculate a distance between samples. That's why it's called metric. Okay. I uh, uh, somewhere uh, reading about twin neural network. Uh, twin neural network. Is it similar? Uh, yeah, it's actually similar to uh, CMS neural network. I, um, I even suppose it's just a synonym, and CMS neural network is just a, a two copy of the same network that share the same uh, set of weights. And one pass is uh, used to uh, calculate embedding from one image and another from uh, the second images. And thus, during training, we update, we update the weights shared between two branches. And that's why it's called uh, um, CMEs, because it, it's just a copy of the same network. Mm -hmm. And twins is uh, very similar to that. Okay, Ed, you mentioned uh, 220, no, 256 um, embeddings. Yes? Yeah. And you, yeah, and it's for large images. For smaller images, you can use smaller number of uh, embeddings for comparison. Yeah, uh, How do you, you choose uh, this number of embeddings? And usually it is used as a number of power of two because uh, modern uh, uh, GPUs uh, works well with uh, such numbers. So uh, we decided we, we actually used um, different uh, dimensions, started from 128, uh, finished by 512. And uh, it looks like that uh, 256 give us the best results. Okay, thank you. So it's just empirical, uh, empirical uh, choice. Okay, okay. Maybe somebody have questions. To please, please, Zinyakin, Alexey Zinyakin. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Uh, have I understood that right that this method can be applied to cognitive modeling? Mm, uh, sorry, what do you mean by cognitive modeling? A cognitive modeling. I got so that you uh, select these images, well, uh, then you process them, and you have output that is relevant to, in this case. Maybe this is cognitive modeling in the big perspective. So can this method be applied to cognitive modeling? Yeah, it, it can be applied just by calculating and embeddings. And it also may be used as well as uh, for image driven tasks. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Natalia uh, Onishin for also. Thank you. Um, another question with uh, the practical application of this method. Uh, you have mentioned face recognition and uh, another ones. What could be another goal of uh, normal users of uh, electronic uh, gadgets uh, this method can serve? Uh, are there any goals uh, uh, that could be implemented here and now? Uh, because it sounds very practical, uh, what what your research looks like. Um, yeah, it has it have a lot of practical applications, starting from uh, such such examples that I have mentioned about uh, retail, where a model um, uh, are not required to be retrained every day, and also it's uh, simplify. Um, our prediction in time of computational resources because, because we have uh, we could uh, uh, work with pre-calculated database of embeddings 
and we actually are required just to uh, extract embeddings from one input images to predict uh, a class, not uh, calculating uh, embeddings twice. So it's uh, it has uh, it have it has a lot of practical applications. Did I answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you so much for your very useful research. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Maxim Kizitsky also want to have a question. Okay, and, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, you mentioned a uh, method called triplet loss in your presentation. Uh, can you please explain in more details how you have selected the anchors and uh, positive and negative examples uh, uh, in your method? Uh, yeah, we found it very uh, important to uh, choose right triplet mining policy. Uh, the first attempt were to just randomly mine uh, randomly, and it uh, leads to a completely bad result, about less than 30% accuracy, because the uh, model is, uh, tends to overfit it very quickly. And when we uh, try to use a hard triplet mining policy, uh, it brings us uh, dramatically bad results. Hard triplet mining policy means to uh, involve in the training process only such triplets that, uh, the, that have uh, quite big loss. Or in other words, uh, we force our model to uh, pay attention only to those samples, to those triplets, where it fails to predict and to calculate empathics correctly. And it's, uh, we found it very uh, important to train uh, such models. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have over time with our first report. <clears throat> Thank you very much, reporter. And uh, we are continue our session. Taras Linduk has possibility to make his report. Name of report, evaluation, the efficiency of information technology or big data intelligence analysis and processing. Please. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yes, and do you hear me? Yes, probably and yes. <clears throat> I would like to present you <coughs> paper evaluation the efficiency of information technology of big data intelligence analysis and processing. <coughs> Today, big data has become a defining and growing feature of modern world economy. Yes. Ever. The factor of global change yeah. is almost in all sectors, but complex and structured data are difficult to access using traditional analytics methods. This is where deep neural networks come to rescue, uh, which have uh, high reliability of nonlinear conversion and presentation compared to traditional neural networks. The imperfection and limitation of existing approaches and methods do not allow to ensure sufficient efficiency of analysis and processing of big data. Uh, the methodology of intelligent analysis and processing of big data in the absence, incompleteness, vagueness, and uncertainty is based, is based on the use of the following principles. Uh, which are uh, the basic of the developed models and methods. Basic principles of working with uh, big data, which can be formulated on the basis of definition of big data. Principles that increase the efficiency and reliability of analytic analysis and processing of big data. Principles that increase the efficiency and reliability of analysis of, in, uh, of big data processing. 
uh, the basis principle of, of big data processing is mainly considered to be horizontal scalability, which provides data processing distributed over hundreds and thousands of computer nodes without performance degrading. The principle of fault tolerance is derived from the principle of horizontal scalability. As uh, there may be many computing nodes in the cluster and their numbers, it is possible to increase the probability of uh, machine failure increases. Uh, next principle, the principle of data locality, because data is distributed across the large number of computer nodes, it is physically located on one uh, server and processed on another, the cost of data transfer may be high. The principle of ensuring resistance to data error. When using information technology to obtain reliable and uh, high quality results, it is important not only the methods, ways and means of obtaining them, but also the initial data quality. The principles of resilience uh, to data error based on data quality assessment involves uh, recovering missing data. The principle of providing the ability to evolve and adapt provides the ability to develop the system over time in order to acquire best properties. And finally, the principle of ensuring sufficient speed and data security involves the possibility of efficient data implementation and real-time decision-making based on fuzzy logic. The proposed principles are the basic for the development of models and methods of data mining and data processing. Big data, first, big data quality models that take into account seven quality parameters which allowed to determine the characteristics of these parameters due to lack correlation between them. Big data models for missing data recovery, which is based on a hierarchy of objects that allows processing structure and semi-structured data from sources with different data structures. The method of recovering missing data, which allows analyzing the hidden dependencies in the data set and take into account the nature of the data set and predict the lack of, of the, uh, lack of data. The method of classification of network packets based on deep neural networks, which is characterized by reducing the dimension, dimensionality of the analysed information in the middle of network. A method of uh, recognizing objects in the image of satellites uh, images based on the deep convolutional neural network, which allow to increase the reliability of uh, images classification with poor quality and low resolution. A method for recognizing object in images uh, of text document based on image preprocessing with uh, simplifies the location of individual parts and subsequent recognition of lo localized block using a deep convolution neural network. A method of creation and operating deep neural network based on an evolutionary approach, which allows in parallel with the algorithm to find the optimal neural network parameters to analyze big data. Method of increasing the speed of analysis and processing of big data, which is based on preprocessing options for possible outputs of deep neural network. For information support of the offered models and methods, the information technology of intelligent analysis and processing of big data in the condition of their absence, incompleteness, vagueness, and uncertainty is developed. The input data of proposed information technology of intelligent analysis and big, and big data processing are parameters of uh, network packets, satellite images with the image of solar panel, panels, images of uh, text documents. The source of information of information technology for intelligent analysis and big data processing are the result of classification of neural packets, the result of recognizing of solar panels, and result of recognizing of text documents. Uh, 
The developed information technology of intelligent system and uh, big data processing is presented in the form of a structural model. Let's evaluate the effectiveness of developed information technology for intelligent analysis and big data processing. Let T0 be the time span of data reco recovery and T power J, T0 power J be the time span of data recovery risk. Ice iteration of the J's processed part, uh, task. Then the data recovery be performed to process the next Q plus one big data. The time for processing is denoted by following the equation and defined as follows, equation number one. The value of T, zero, zero C power Q plus one is uh, obtained as the average of all previous processing time for data recovery divided by maximum amount of previous values. Therefore, final time is less or equal one. In the future, the next value of time can be estimated by the previous values using equation number two. Let's introduce the iterative formula to optimize calculation. Then we will have time will be as following following uh, equation four, and the efficiency of the system as a whole is defined as a value that takes into account the time for data recovery. TE, it is uh, this coefficient. The minimization of a uh, function f minimal of the efficiency factor will reflect the best efficiency in particular, we will present it as follows, equation number six. If P is equal to zero, then we will obtain Ke in following form, equation number seven, while Ke is less or equal uh, one. If P is greater than zero, then Ke may be greater than one. As a result of exper experimental studies obtained Ke, which was, which was equal 0 0.82. The methodology of intelligent analysis and processing of big data in the conditions of their absence, incompleteness, vagueness, and uncertainty is based on the use of following principles. Basic principles of working with big data, which can be formulated on the basis of definition of big data, and principles that increase the efficiency of reliability of analysis and processing of big data. An approach to evaluate the effectiveness of mining of and data processing, data mining and data processing based on the use of missing data recovery method, network packet, packet classification method, object recognition method, and so on. In particular, it was found that the level of efficiency in the applied method of analysis and processing of big data was obtained at the level 0 0.82. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Have anybody questions to the reporter? Maybe. Um, I have one question. What is uh, data recovery and uh, how it depends of these seven quality parameters you mentioned? So data recovery is uh, very important because we sometimes we have missing data or some adequate, uh, not adequate data and we should check them before processing. Okay, but it's very change it from data to data. And uh, all these um, parameters depend on this level of missing data. It's complicated to evaluate 
such optimal coefficient and take into account missing data, level of missing data. Yes, you're, you're right. Maybe. Okay, maybe somebody else have questions. No. Thank you very much for your report. And we will continue session. Next reporter, somebody from Irina Humitska, Vasil Tesluk, Irina Bazilevich, and Yulia Kordiaka. Kordiak. Machine learning and classical methods combined for text differentiation. Who will make a report? Uh, good afternoon, dear researchers. I'm Irena Kumetska from Applied Linguistics Department of Lviv Polytechnic National University. Okay, and Irena Kumetska have word. Yes. The problem raised in the research is closely connected with text analysis. There are different approaches to text analysis. There are different approaches to text analysis. They can be classified according to the language level and language units. All the approaches aim at characterizing the researched authorial style. Topicality. The latest methodologies and approaches aim at an optimal solution of the problem of tax differentiation. The solution must be simple and it must ensure high accuracy. In scientific papers and formal documents, the author's manner of writing can be hardly noticeable. In this case, different approaches are used. We propose a combination of the machine learning and the classical methods. In other authors' research, tax differentiation is successfully done by the machine learning method, the data clustering. The difference between the clusters reflects the difference between the authorial styles. Thus, the data clustering is used for psychological portrait formation of social network users in the research by Litvin, Vesotska, Rzewski, and other researchers. The purpose of our research is to determine an efficient combination of the machine learning and the classical methods which ensures high test validity results for text differentiating. The novelty of the research is an offered combination of the machine learning method, the data clustering, and the classical method, the student's t-test, to differentiate English and Ukrainian texts. The algorithm of the applied method has the following steps. Calculate the absolute frequency of occurrence of function words. Use the method of hierarchical clustering. Calculate the absolute and the mean frequency of occurrence for consonants. Perform the Pearson's normality test and the student's t-test. Computer program realization. The structure of the program includes the following modules. Module of data input output. Module of forming samples of Ukrainian function words and English consonant groups. Module of calculating the absolute frequencies of function words and the mean frequencies of consonants. Module of performing the Pearson's test and the student's t-test. The structure of the classes of the software is the following, main sample processor, transcription processor, consonant processor, consonant utils, and statistic processor. The results obtained. 
the data clustering has been performed in eight samples from Ukrainian emoting pros. In figure one, we see that the results of data clustering are successful for Cyclone and Sobor by Oles Honchar, Lev Tamesha and Konex Trebunets by Leonid Glibov, Malay Maron and Naloni Prerode by Ivan Franko, but not very successful for Zahar Berkut by Ivan Franko. All the research literary works by Ivan Franco are not in the same cluster. Therefore, we change the used single linkage for complete linkage. The results are presented in figure two. In figure two, we see that the use of complete linkage has given a better result as all the literary works by Ivan Franco, Malay Maron, Naloni Prerod, and Zahar Berkut are in one cluster. Consequently, the use of complete linkage is more efficient for solving this task. On the, on the phonological level, we have compared the Moore's poetry with a colloquial style. The essential differences have been established in six out of eight consonant groups. The results are presented in table one. Conclusions. The proposed combination of the data clustering method and the student's t-test is the novelty of the research. The tax differentiation task has been successfully done on the lexical level. A good example is the comparison of Malay Maron and Naloni Prerode by Ivan Franco, in which the distance is equal to 13.4. The texts of Thomas More's poetry and the colloquial style differ essentially in six out of eight consonant groups for an unidentified position in a word. The results of the research have shown that the data clustering is a simpler method if compared to the student's t-test. However, the student's t-test ensures more reliable data with a test validity of 95%. The practical application of the results is the authorship attribution. The presentation is over. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Maybe somebody have a question to reporter. I'm sorry, could you specify the usage of Pearson test in the process of the research? A Pearson test for normality is, uh, is an obligatory step. It's a must to use this because uh, otherwise it won't be possible to carry out the student's t-test. Yes. So the samples researched must follow the law of normal distribution. If they follow this law and uh, we use the Pearson's test for this, we can apply the student's t-test. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Somebody else have a questions? No. Then thank you for, report, for your report. And uh, please, uh, next uh, report is Oleg Rudenko, Alexander Bessonov, Andrei Shaina. Shaina. Present anybody from this list? Oleg Rudenko, Alexander Bessono, Andrei Shai. No, no. Okay. One moment, mute. Yes. Then next. Uh, Yuri Krivenchuk, Dmitro Petrenko, Darius Tsikhoin, Yuri Malinovsky, Tetyana Elzhinska. 
anybody. Then maybe instead of these absent reporters, I will give the word to Svetlana Holushuk. Can you make your report? Yes, I am here. Thank you. Please, you have you have Let maybe this. already two reports in instead of this. Please, you have a word. Yes. Yes, just a moment. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Mention. So, dear I... colleagues, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. dear colleagues, my name is Svetlana Holushchuk, and I would like to present you uh, the results of our analysis on the topic comparative analysis of using different parts of speech in the Ukrainian text based on stylistic approach. The, the research is conducted by Alina Dmitriev, Lyubomir Chirun, Roman Holoschuk, and Svetlana Holoschuk, and we represent Lviv Polytechnic National University and Ivan Franko National University. So the objectives of our research are to analyze words of different parts of speech in Ukrainian, text to identify the speaker's purpose to use certain parts of speech to express his opinion fully, to present the software which analyzes Ukrainian texts and calculates the frequency of words of different parts of speech, to analyze the results of frequency comparison of other parts of speech based on texts of different styles, and to develop diagrams showing the statistics of obtained results. So the object of the research is the analysis of the Ukrainian texts, which considers words of different parts of speech. And the subject of the research is the, is the study of the frequency and sequence of different parts of speech words in the Ukrainian texts. Sorry, but so the recognition of not, not changes. <clears throat> Maybe Say again. Uh, you should change your slides. Oh, just a moment, but on my computer, I can see that the slides are changing. Then uh, you shared not right uh, screen. You, now you shared for, for us only editor uh, mode. Okay, just a moment. Let me then fix that problem. Okay. 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 No problem. I don't know what is wrong here. Okay, maybe in that case, I will start just the second presentation. When you share screen, you should choose mm -hmm. right. Right one. Okay, be so kind to tell me, can you see my um, presentation now? Uh, yes, we, we see, but again, as editor mode. Try to change slides. Like this, does it change? No. Okay, sorry that. Then let me fix. Thanks. Mm. Sorry, just. Okay. I'm sorry. In Give this me case, time. In the editor mode, you can change slides by manually clicking on them. So you see. You do the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you see just okay, okay. the way we, that slides this, change? Yes, yes. Now it's changed. 
Okay. Do this way. Very good. Okay, thank you. So but you sorry. Can to previous presentation. In this way, you can. I'm not sure that it would work. Seems to me okay. there was a technical problem on there with that okay. with the system. Okay. Okay, let me start with the second presentation. Please. So the second presentation is uh, on the topic intelligent system for socialization of individuals with shared interests based on NLP, machine learning, and CO technologies. Uh, our investigation is conducted by Taras Batyuk, Victoria Vysotska, Roman Holoschuk, and Svetlana Holoschuk, and we represent Lviv Polytechnic National University. Uh, developing uh, an intelligent system for the socialization of individuals is one of the critical tasks of modern social communication. That's why the main goal of our research is to create uh, an intelligent system for the socialization of individuals that uses CO technologies and machine learning methods. The set goals include the following objectives to specify the intelligent system structure by using IDFOO and IDEF3 diagrams, to construct the hierarchy of the system processes by using a tree structure, and to implement neural networks for identifying a human face in the photos, and to create an algorithm for analyzing and comparing user information. To achieve the goal of our research, we analyze the following technologies and applications. And they are Twitter, Instagram, Tinder, Badoo, Chatouts programs, Levenstein, and Fuzzy search algorithm. The main aim um, of our and aspects of the system's functioning are formulated using the goal tree to describe the intelligent system. In this case, the system is regarded as an intelligent system for the socialization of individuals by common interests. On the slide, you can see a goal tree of the intelligent system, which contains four levels of hierarchy. And the next step is to prioritize, prioritize hierarchical uh, elements. After constructing the goal tree and related works, the system functions further uh, specified and IDEFO functional diagrams are selected to detail the system structure. First of all, to generalize the main functions of the created intelligent system, a contextual diagram is created, which consists of the main input and output data and primary data for displaying mechanisms and controls. Input data includes user logging, user password, database, user photos, and user request. Initial aspects include user socialization and an updated database. Then decomposition is performed and a hierarchy of processes at the lower levels of the system is constructed. In addition, most of the intelligent system processes are specified using workflow diagrams. A tree-like display structure is used to display a transparent form of the intelligent system and the order of processes since it is the easiest way to represent a clear hierarchy of system elements. The primary root process of an intelligent strategy is search for relevant users, and this is the most generalized explanation of all the process that occur during the system's operation. The hierarchy of process is shown here on the slide. Uh, we used IDE environment developed by Microsoft Visual Studio to write an intelligent system for socializing individuals by common interests. Visual Studio also has a free version, which is entirely sufficient for most of the tasks we set. This development entire environment is convenient and easy to use and provides many different opportunities for writing a code. It easily debugs a program by using code execution breakpoints. A screenshot of Visual Studio program and its main elements 
is shown here on this slide. Unique environments are also used to write the client part of the program. In this case, there is already a lot to choose from. Visual Studio Code, Sublime Text, Brackets, and other application programs are the most often used ones for developing client software products. In this case, Visual Studio Code is chosen as the Microsoft created this development environment, which easily interacts and is very similar to other company products. A screenshot of the Visual Studio Code is shown on this slide. All data of intelligence system is stored in tables in a relational database, and all available information is linked to each other using relationships. A diagram of the current database is shown on this slide. First of all, let's explain the key uh, table of the database. It includes the slots users, messages, likes, and photos. The user slot represent the current user of the system. The photos table contains all the main properties of user's photo in the intelligence system. The messages table contains all the basic properties of messages sent by users of the intelligence system. And the likes table contains the ideas of users who put likes, namely like care ID, a unique identifier of the user who likes, and like key ID, a unique identifier of the user who is selected in the system. The analysis and formation of similar user BIPs are implemented using fuzzy search algorithms, the Levenstein algorithm and the noisy channel model, which made it possible to maximize the user selection processes automation and optimize the time spent in these processes. The block diagrams are presented here on the slide. Now let's move to the control example. So the control example shows the main functions and work of the created intelligence system. Uh, you can see the generated list of users using text processing algorithm and sorted in descending order by the percentage of user similarity and the use of filters to search in an already generalized list. After receiving the implemented intelligence system results, a statistical analysis of two system parameters was carried out, namely comparing the speed of user sample formation and the accuracy of the obtained percentage ratio. The combination of Levenstein algorithm, n-gram sample extension noisy channel model and the standard Levenstein algorithm is most often used in similar systems for the socialization of individuals. Being implemented, they are respectively compared. The diagram shown here demonstrates that the combination of algorithms is more efficient and accurate by about 25 to 30% comparing with the usual Levenstein one. The speed of forming a sample of users is analyzed. We selected 12 users of the system and developed an example using a combination of algorithms and the standard Levenstein algorithm. The resulting diagram is shown in slide, which is there in front of you. So we may conclude that the combination of algorithm implemented in the system makes the sample about 10, 10 times faster than the standard Levenstein algorithm. Now let me move to the conclusions. So in our time, the socialization of individuals according to shared interests is an essential process since most people try to simplify and automate the main life processes, which usually take up a lot of free time. We investigated the main algorithms that play an essential role in social networks and various users interaction systems. So, the intelligent system structure was also specified using IDEFO and IDEF3 diagrams and the hierarchy of system processes 
was constructed using a tree structure. Two neural networks were implemented, convolutional and semis, which allowed us to search for a human face in the photos that the user uploads and compare the found face with the available faces in the database. An algorithm for analyzing and comparing user information was created using fuzzy search algorithm, the Levenstein algorithm and the noisy channel model. We achieved our goals and objectives in the work and there are still many things that can be improved inside the created intelligence system. So it makes uh, us to further develop the, uh, the topic of our investigation. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Yes. Please, maybe somebody wants to ask a question to reporter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nobody. I have one question. Uh, you mentioned some um, um, interests in comparison different users by interest, but some interest have much more weight to other interests. Do you take um, into account different weights of interest for users? Thank you for your question. Yes, we agree with you that sometimes uh, the different ways of users uh, take different time. But I think that this is uh, the area which we will have, a, which will uh, we will um, further consider in our future investigations. Yeah. Okay. And uh, also, it should be taken into account that uh, connection between people is a nonlinear system, and it's very complicated to evaluate such combination for socialization, because presence of one person, it could be non uh, elevate for other person and so on. Okay. Yes, totally agree with you. And again, it takes time and efforts for our further work. Yes, it's very interesting uh, system, could be included in some social networks and mm, let it will be developed. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Please. Uh -huh. yes. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, dear Ms. Presenter, my question is, could you specify on who exactly are the relevant users and if there are any restrictions to connect to be registered in the system operation in practice? Okay, the question you are asking was not the part of my research. So that's why I am not able to answer it. But for sure, I, I'm, I think that it will be, um, it will be considered by uh, the team we work with. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then uh, we should continue our session. Our present Yuri Krevenchuk, Dmitro Petrenko, Darius Cichon, Yuri Malinovsky, Tetiana Helzinska. No. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Ah, Petrenko. Yes. yes, okay. Where you have word, please make your report. Okay, I start the presentation. Do you see the presentation? Yes, very good. Uh, okay, good afternoon. I would like to uh, present to your attention our work entitled Selection of Deep Reinforcement Learning Using a Genetic Algorithm. Observing the process of learning in the nature, we can see that the success of the body's adaptation to the environment depends on several factors. 
Uh, conventionally, this can be depicted using the so-called learning success pyramid, which is shown on the slide. The basic factor in this is the process of evolution based on the natural selection of the best individuals from the population and combining their properties with each other to create even better offspring. This process allows to weed out the individuals who have adapted the worst to the current conditions. This is the process when ancestors directly influence the propensity of the students to learn. The next layer in this pyramid is the process of self-learning. Based on the qualities received from their ancestors, an individual uh, may have a greater or lesser inclination uh, to learn and accordingly uh, shown learning outcomes. This is a process where each individual is responsible for himself. When each needs to explore the environment independently and make its own decision based on observations. Uh, the top of the pyramid is the process by which more experienced individuals pass on their experience to less experienced ones. The so-called learning process with the teacher. Uh, in this paper, the computation of the first two layers of the, this pyramid will be investigated. Namely, the process of selecting the best adopted individuals using a genetic algorithm and in fact, self-learning algorithm based on deep reinforcement learning. Consider in more details each of the stages. Genetic algorithm is an artificial simulation of process of natural selection, creating a population in which all individuals have minor initial differences. Uh, with each generation will produce offspring those in, uh, individuals who are best adapted to the conditions of the environment. The better individuals adapt to the environment, uh, the more likely they uh, are to have more offspring. Reinforcement learning uh, is an artificial simulation of self-learning process. It is based on the observation of the agent uh, of the environment. And based on this observation uh, and the results of its own previous, uh, previous actions to determine, uh, to determine which of the possible next actions will be most useful in this current simulation situation. Uh, nowadays, there are a significant number of possible implementation of deep reinforcement learning algorithms. Sometimes uh, it could be difficult to determine, to determine uh, which of the algorithm would be best used to solve the issue. In addition, each algorithm contains a number of initial parameters that affect its performance. Some parameters may improve the result, some may worsen. Sometimes the parameters can only affect the speed of the algorithm or its learning. Uh, in this experiment, the parameters of this deep reinforcement learning algorithm act as artificial genes uh, or uh, chromosomes for genetic algorithm. Since uh, deep reinforcement learning algorithms are often not interchangeable, uh, was decided to isolate the population of each of the algorithms separately. These populations are considered separately during training, but during the selection based on the generation testing, uh, agents from all populations are considered together. This will allow choosing the best URL algorithm for the current task. Consider in more details the flow chart of the algorithm. The initial population is created firstly, as shown in the previous slide. Next, the number of iteration is determined or whether the quality of training or another desirable parameter of the end of the experiment. After that, the process of training each uh, agent model from the entire general population begins. Upon the com uh, competition of the train, uh, testing is uh, conducted in virtual, uh, virtual environment, in the uh, result of which uh, there will be select the best individuals who will receive the ability to have offspring. If the criterion of uh, completion of the algorithm has been reached, these selected individuals will be presented in the list of results. If not, 
a population of offspring will be created on their basis and the algorithm will continue to work on the training of offspring. Uh, in the experiment, the agent's uh, task was to balance the object on the platform for as long as possible. You can see uh, how um, with each uh, succeeding generation uh, in horizontally, the average balancing time of an object gradually increase. Uh, the criterion of completing this experiment was a number of iteration of the algorithm. For the, initial, uh, for the initial total population of 30 individuals by the middle of the experiment, uh, the population had a halt, a halt uh, and the best algorithm was chosen. The process of improving the initial parameters in this algorithm continued. At the end of the experiment, uh, the five best options for the initial parameters were selected. Uh, the advantages of this approach are uh, ability to find the best GRL algorithm and the best parameters uh, and the best parameters for it from the original population. However, the disadvantages uh, include high hardware requirements and a significant time to find the optimal solution. Uh, also reminds uh, the uncertain efficiency of the selection, uh, selection of algorithms due to the impossibility of crossing between them. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. And uh, maybe you have any questions. Thank you very much. Anybody have a questions to reporter? It's very universal system. No, any questions? Um, I have one comment, maybe let me very short joke from Soviet period. Um, Soviet engineers invent and combine for collecting mushrooms. The task of uh, combiner is to find out a mushroom. The rest is the task of combine. It's very similar, you have big combine, all the technologies combined in one algorithm. And uh, I lost uh, how long uh, your, uh, how long continues your uh, algorithm. You showed uh, your slides. In my experiment, uh, uh, it yes. was- uh, 15 hours. Uh, yeah, it was uh, 15 hours. Yeah, 16, uh, 16 hours. But uh, the um, actual time for choosing the algorithm was uh, six uh, hours. Mm -hmm. After six hours, uh, other uh, for algorithm was uh, uh, died <laughs> in population. And what kind of tasks uh, could be uh, no, applied your algorithm to different uh, learning tasks? Uh, uh, firstly, I hope uh, that uh, it will uh, help to learn different drones uh, to adapt to the environment. Okay, but uh, for, for drones, maybe every time we'll be choosing the same uh, algorithm from the set, not? Uh, for different drones, uh, I think it will choose uh, different algorithms, which will show the best results in uh, present environment. Okay, maybe. Thank you. Maybe other questions? No? No other questions. Thank you very much for your report. Very interesting. Thank you, too. Next uh, report will be Igor Naumenko, Vladislav Pietachenko, Miketa Mironenko, Taras Savchenko. Anybody from this list? Yeah, uh, Pietachenko is here. Pietachenko, okay. You have a word. Please.
Yes. Uh, very good. Yeah. Uh, yes. The topic of research is information extreme machine learning of an onboard ground object recognition system uh, with the choice of a base recognition class. Uh, topic deals with ground object recognition system of unmanned aerial vehicles and the large number of human activities require up-to-date geo-information of the terrain nowadays. It includes such tasks like object recognition, object tracking, recognition of abnormal states of objects, so on. And known methods of data mining, uh, usually including artificial neural networks, have a number of disadvantages that are manifested in the processing of a large amount of data under arbitrary conditions of the formation of images of terrain objects. The main, the main way to solve this problem is to use the ideas and methods of machine learning and pattern recognition. Therefore, the criterion of a method, uh, sorry, the creation of a method of machine learning invariant to multidimensionality uh, and flexible to relearn through the expansion of the alphabet of recognition classes is an urgent task. So the purpose of research was to increase the functional efficiency of the onboard system of drone uh, for autonomous recognition of terrestrial, natural, and infrastructural objects on the bias of machine learning. To accomplish the purpose, it was necessary to solve the following task. Uh, to design a categorical model of information extreme machine learning, then develop the algorithm, build decision rules within the geometric approach, programmatically implement machine learning algorithm for a given alphabet of recognition classes, and then evaluate the functional effectiveness of machine learning in the operation of role in exam mode. The formalized formulation of the problem of information synthesis of the drone is reduced to the search of the maximum of the average information criterion for optimizing the parameters of machine learning. Images of terrain are considered as input data set or recognition class alphabet of discrete number of classes. Using geometrical representation of data, we got parameters of class containers. In process of machine learning, there is a need to perform optimization of container, like radii of containers and tolerance system boundaries. Information synthesis of system proceeds with finding the global maximum of the average value of the information criterion. This slide shows the information criterion that is used in work to optimize machine learning parameters. It's based on modified pullback measure and its logarithmic criterion to evaluate entropy of system. Also, it's based on hypothesis of equally probable events, uh, statistical reliability, and error values. The iterative algorithm of onboard machine learning system is shown here. Optimization of the system and control tolerances uh, for recognition features deals with the delta parameter, which is equal to half of the symmetric tolerance field. Hence, idea of information extreme machine learning is to find global maximum in the area of possible values for system. Then we see the decision rules. They are built according to optimal geometric parameters obtained in the process of learning. According to the rules, uh, the vector of features on the exam belongs to recognition class, which has the maximum possible membership function. Uh, because the decision rules are based on a geometric approach, they, unlike other methods, are characterized by high recognition efficiency, which is extremely important for drones uh, because identification on board of drone will take a place in real time. And about input data set. Aerial photographs were used to form the input mathematical description of system. On this slide, we may see the input images 
of alphabetical classes. Among which we are mostly interested in objects of man-made origin, like first class or the obligatory state of training within the framework of information extreme intellectual technology is the optimization of the system and control tolerances. In this case, the task of choosing the base class may be considered. The assumption was made that exper and experimental is confirmed that it's expedient to choose the class with the largest variance for place and features uh, because due to its variety of features, it will be the closest neighbor to any other class in the alphabet. According to that concept, the obligatory procedure of machine learning is optimization of system and tolerances for recognition features, which plays the role of the level of quantization in the transforming the training matrix into the working one in binary form. The class that has the largest variance in learning maximum in learning matrix is expedient to make basis. Next slide shows the graph of dependence of alphabetically recognized recognition classes of normalized information criterion to the delta parameter, which changed simultaneously for all features. So here we may see that tolerance boundaries for classes. And in addition, in addition, a sequential optimization was performed where delta varied separately for each class of features. And it showed even better results. After we got tolerance boundaries, we performed a machine learning process once again, and we get graphs of dependence of normalized information criterion on the radii of the containers of the recognition classes. According to them, we build decision rules for system. As a result, we got that image. The identification of frames of the region can be considered as highly reliable. It should be noted that man-made objects are classified almost without errors, despite their arbitrary position on the frame. Making the conclusion during the research uh, was developed on onboard ground recognition system, uh, which is an integral part of modern unmanned aerial vehicle system. At the same time, the hypothesis of choosing the base class by variance was put forward and experimentally confirmed. This approach allowed with minimal time to increase the functional efficiency of recognition system. Uh, the research uh, of the work uh, were implemented into part of research of center of missile troops and artillery of armed forces of Ukraine and used as a part of state budget team of Department of Computer Science in Sumo State University. Here you may see data about my co-authors. If you have any questions, you may contact us and we'll tell answers. I'll be glad to answer your questions now. Thank you very much to the reporter. Maybe somebody wants to ask question to Vladislav Pietachenko. No? May I ask about uh, realization? Is there any problem, limitation with uh, memory or time? Uh, it should be uh, real time. Yeah. Now we're working on uh, memory limitations because uh, drones usually have small amount of resources. It's nearly uh, several systems for uh, control of all modules and recognition part will take some part of the resources. Uh, so for now we work with four classes as amount of alphabet, we are 
hoping to increase the amount of places. And now we're trying to implement some new methods of grouping classes to solve the problem of resources. It might be some hierarchical structures or so on uh, to skip research, uh, not research, uh, resource extinction for process of learning uh, by uh, separating space of features into smaller spaces. It may help us to save more memory for next uh, explorations. Okay, okay, interesting. Thank you very much. Other questions? No questions. Thank you. It's let it will be future advances in this feature. Then next uh, reporter, Yuri Pono. Ponochovny, Oleg Ivan Ivanchenko, Vyacheslav Harchenko, Irina Udovic, and Eduard Bayu. Who is present? Harchenko. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll okay. present uh, our... Um... Poltava State Agrarian University, please. Yes, uh, do, do, do you see our presentation and do yes, you hear Yes, we see. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to present our research result. My name is Vyacheslav Harchenko. I represent Department of Computer System Network and Cybersecurity, National Aerospace University, Kharkiv. And um, my colleagues from um, Dnipro uh, University of Technology, Professor Oleg Ivanchenko, and uh, um, the same University Department of Computer System uh, and Software. Uh, Dr. Irina Udovic and my colleagues from Poltava State Agrarian University, Professor uh, Yuri Panachovny and Eduard uh, Bayer from uh, company uh, Yalantis. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the um, organizer of this conference because we, we understand uh, how it's difficult to organize conference in condition on, of uh, the war. Um, it's a map of our team. We represent, as I said, three uh, cities of Ukraine, uh, Kharkiv, Dnipro, and uh, Poltava, and um, IT company from Dnipro, company Yolantis. Um, we will um, talk about the um, problem of um, assessment availability uh, and uh, cybersecurity of uh, cloud systems. Uh, based on a combination of different uh, different traditional classical models um, as uh, reliability block diagrams, Markov models, and modification of Markov models as multi-fragmental models, um, and application of um, machine learning for parameterization um, of such kind of uh, models because it is a very important point for simulation. Um, result of our um, research will be dedicated to um, technique of combine and the comparative analysis of uh, research result. Um, the, we will uh, we um, have um, researched uh, one of the typical cloud system. It is a um, cloud video system. Uh, architecture of this um, system consists of uh, primary virtual network, um, uh, content delivery network services, Wi-Fi and mobile network, and desktop or mobile, mobile um, machine. Um, architecture of primary virtual network is uh, traditional uh, and consists of uh, application server um, and um, other um, traditional components. Uh, this system uh, works in um, as other cloud systems uh, works in um, condition of um, influence of physical and, uh, and uh, information environments and the uh, failures of software, hardware, attacks on vulnerability, and so on. Hence, we have um, enough um, complex um, picture in point of view, the simulation and assessment availability and uh, security. 
Um, in condition of um, in, increasing um, uh, rate of uh, cyber threats and attacks, um, as according to this, this slide is one of the statistics um, data set, um, um, there are a lot of risks um, caused by such attacks uh, in combining of uh, failures hardware on, and software components of such kind of systems. Um, um, there are a lot of different models, um, traditional models um, based on reliability block diagrams and Markov analysis and fault tree analysis and modification multifragmental model. Um, our approach based on combination of, uh, first of all, RBD and um, Markov models, especially multifragmental models and application uh, machine learning um, technique to parameterize, uh, parameterize um, input parameters for uh, Markov uh, simulation. I'll uh, talk about this approach um, in detail um, during my presentation. Uh, the main objectives of uh, our um, report is comparative analysis of availability models of cloud architecture, um, especially for CVS system, development and research combined model uh, based on um, RBD and the uh, multifragmental uh, Markov models. The targeted groups for, um, for this, um, for, for our result is uh, um, CSP service personnel and service providers. And then uh, based on this result, we can to increase accuracy and availability and accessibility of such services. Uh, the main as assumption which we um, uh, taken into account uh, on our models is a traditional uh, traditional uh, assumption um, related to um, uh, distribution law. We talk about uh, uh, the simplest uh, distribution law as uh, um, exponential uh, law. Uh, the main uh, one of the assumptions which I would like to um, uh, comment it uh, concerned to multifragmental cloud system models because in this case we apply Markov models, but uh, but uh, the failure and um, maybe in recovery rate can be changed according with a simple, simple formula. Uh, when uh, we stand step by step after, after elimination uh, vulnerabilities or, or software faults, uh, can take into account and can recalculate um, failure, failure rate. This approach we applied um, a, lot, a lot of time and uh, it um, allows to uh, simplify um, modeling when um, failure rate uh, can be changed. Um, first stage of our simulation is the most simple, it's the application of uh, RBD-based uh, modeling according with uh, initial functional scheme, we developed uh, such uh, kind of model. Uh, model and then um, calculate uh, calculated um, availability function uh, considering uh, considering this chain it is um, it is a um, standard approach to um, to development of such kind of models next one is uh, markov models in this case we we analyze uh, CVS system uh, considering uh, different kind of um, a different kind of uh, failures, failures of uh, software, hardware, and um, in this case we have uh, we have um, not very difficult, very complex uh, graph, and we, we can uh, using this uh, graph simulate uh, behavior of uh, such system. The next step is more interesting. In this case, we take into account changing of um, uh, failure rates. Um, why failure rates uh, are changed? It it um, is co caused by by elimination of software uh, software faults, and other reason is um, attacks on vulnerabilities, which can be changed. I mean, uh, changed um, of um, 
changing of um, attacks uh, um, rate and the failure caused by such kind of attacks. In the simplest uh, case, we have we have two fragment models. When um, the second fragment uh, has the same structure, but but uh, has other uh, parameters of uh, of failure. I mean uh, lambda CDN content delivery networks. Um, is um, uh, um, less than uh, the previous one for fragment one. In general, uh, in general, um, availability function can be can be calculated um, can be calculated uh, as uh, sum of um, probability of um, state where a system is available. Uh, about parameterization. We, uh, as I said, uh, use uh, machine learning tools uh, to uh, parameterize uh, of input uh, data for uh, proposed models. Um, parameterization is very important point, uh, very important task in po uh, point of uh, um, view accuracy uh, uh, and um, ad adequacy of uh, such models. In this case, um, usually, um, uh, um, is it's uh, used uh, um, approach based on uh, analysis of uh, uh, time rows analysis, but um, we applied machine learning tools as MLLIP uh, and the step by step um, uh, got uh, got parameters of uh, for input parameters using resilient distributed uh, data uh, sets and um, um, we applied result of um, um, processing uh, using traditional um, criterion of a key uh, square uh, test. Uh, it's a result of uh, parameterization uh, for all uh, main parameters, uh, I mean failure rates uh, and um, repair rates and, and uh, so on. Uh, result of uh, parameterization is enough, enough accurate and it um, can guarantee uh, uh, high accuracy of uh, final model simulation. Um, we compare uh, compare uh, result of um, result of uh, calculation of simulation using two kinds of models. First one is a Markov models model, and uh, second one RBD uh, model. When we um, calculate um, calculate availability function based on uh, reliability um, block diagrams. Um, some simulation result um, which. Um, uh, confirm uh, confirm um, confirm adequacy of these two models and uh, and um, uh, good uh, accuracy in point of view um, in point of view um, difference of um, uh, availability uh, function um, uh, calculation uh, and um, other other simulation um, results uh, concerned. Uh, concern um, calculation of availability function uh, using multi-fragment models when uh, when uh, failure rates um, can be changed um, um, such uh, changing uh, can be uh, ca caused by by at attacks on vulnerability uh, CVS system in this case we uh, have more more dynamical um, dynamical uh, changing of uh, evaluation function in the condition of um, increasing of um, rate of attacks on uh, CVS assets. Uh, conclusion, we uh, suggested um, approach uh, to combine uh, RBD, Markov, and multifragmental Markov models plus um, machine learning uh, parameterization of input parameters for uh, cloud system uh, and we develop and um, research um, uh, models for assessing the uh, availability of CVS system. Um, 
two scenarios of if events affecting system availability were considered. The first is when uh, attacks on the uh, CDN components are uh, absent, and second one in condition of attacks and increasing of um, CDN failure rate. Uh, result of um, analysis CVS availability simulation result uh, have been pre presented in the, our uh, paper. Uh, I think it, I can um, not um, more deeply um, uh, comment uh, this result. If you have question, we, we can do it. And uh, what we are planning to uh, to make uh, to research uh, uh, on the next our stage um, stage um, activities, we uh, have started uh, work uh, with um, application DevOps technology, DevOps tools for um, for um, deployment uh, of uh, cloud uh, different cloud uh, system architecture and application um, principle of uh, diversity uh, when you uh, use different uh, cloud um, components and different DevOps um, instrument um, components. And it um, is very important, uh, very interesting uh, research in our point of view. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and any question, please. Thank you to reporter. And uh, please, Natalia Nishenko has a question. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Professor Archimber, you mentioned the elimination of vulnerability of CDN in multi-fragment models. And uh, are there any possibilities to protect uh, more complex models uh, uh, you mentioned in your research? Uh, from these attacks uh, and to prevent uh, mm, this uh, vulnerability. Um, uh, thank you so much for your um, question. Uh, it's a really interesting question. Uh, your question uh, con uh, concerns uh, more detailed aspect of protecting uh, of uh, our CVS system and considering different different uh, possibility of um, protection, we can change the um, result of parameterization uh, for our, our models. Hence, uh, uh, hence, in this case, we uh, based on um, uh, open uh, information about attacks on uh, cloud systems and uh, due to um, such approach, we we could um, we could parameterize uh, our model to calculate availability function, and of course, uh, using different different protection mechanism and of course uh, different scenarios of attacks, we can uh, we can um, uh, digitalize our our um, models and um, and. Um, uh, assess availability function for uh, different uh, different conditions. I I don't show that I I answer um, on your question um, completely. Complete completely. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Maybe some other questions. May I ask you about uh, what is the elementary fragment when you fragmented your. Um, Okay, uh, uh, fragment. It in this case we have traditional Markov graph, but this graph consists of a lot of different fragments. Uh, um, each fragment has uh, have have uh, um, all fragments have the same the same structure, uh, but um, is different. Um, uh, value of parameters for, in this case, uh, failure rate. Hence, a fragment is a part of Markov graph. And the number of uh, such fragments in a graph um, depends on, on um, the um, number of steps, number of changing uh, failure rate uh, caused by, uh, for example, attacks on vulnerabilities 
or um, elimination of failure, uh, failure, um, uh, elimination of uh, design faults, software faults. Cancer fragment is a part of um, Markov graph. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, other questions? Anybody want to? No, thank you for your report. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Next report, Antonina Bada, Natalia Onishenko, Alexander Zinyakin. As I understand, Natalia Onishenko will be a reporter. Yes? No, it's no? Bada Antonina. <laughs> ah, Antonina, okay. Digital technologies for communication simulation in foreign language yes. learning under pandemic. National Technical University, Kharkiv Polytechnical University. Yes, yes. yeah, this is just a moment. Yeah. Uh, can you see the slide? I can only editor of slides. Mm -hmm. The next one, please. Just a moment. Does it work? What is okay. the technical? Just a moment. Okay, okay. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, I am starting. Try to change sliders. Uh, can you change sliders? Yeah, colleagues uh, and the conference participants. Our present paper deals with the problem of efficient combination of traditional and digital technologies for communication simulation in foreign language learning under the pandemic. The goal of the present research is to sum up the discussion Oh, why hey, sorry, sorry. Yeah. can you change your slides because we, we yes. can see the first one. That, that doesn't it work? Can't you see the word introduction? No, no, no we can't. We can't. Right yeah. now we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Very okay, good. then. then. So the goal of this way. research is to sum up the discussion of why simulation of native speaking environment is indispensable in the current situation of pandemic being a modern method of teaching foreign languages, both in the classroom and beyond. The current study aims at the analysis of how the three key educational components described below interact and assist by simulation of native speaking environment, which is an essential modern method of teaching foreign languages. The efficiency of using multimedia techniques for blended learning under the pandemic was proved in the experiment involving three educational components, three universities, and a modern school. Modern language environment with the help of the three educational components serves as a hypothetical result. For audience's con convenience, we will stick to the following abbreviations related to the subject. MMS, Multimedia Simulations. PMT, Pearson Educational Multimedia Toolkit. BYOD, Bring Your Own Device Technique. And DT, Digital Tools. Foreign languages as an educational field, however, had a special demand for this kind of technology to deal with the lack of authentic native language environment in Ukraine as a post-Soviet developing country, badly in need of professional tools for teaching listening and oral communication. The newly created environment is far from being authentic, but can be termed a communicative simulation instead and needs a steady progress and development. Through the MMS, the learners acquire skills of autonomous learning, which are viewed nowadays as the basis of student-centered approach. In this format, the teacher is supposed to put learners to a self-directed, self-initiated, self-planned, and self-regulated learning, 
which is possibly possible by using complex platforms PMT or BYOD. Ukrainian students and learners often face difficulties in mastering the rules of English grammar, as well as the syntagmatic and paradigmatic organization of vocabulary in the speaker's linguistic consciousness. In the experiment described below, based on the first module of the cutting edge intermediate textbook and PEMT, the tools that we have identified are also confirmed in the world ESL practice and are described in a number of studies. Please see the slide. This research study was conducted at two universities of Kharkiv, Ukraine, and the Monoschool English Level, led by Alexei Zinyakin. All the participants were selected according to their proficiency level and experiment material, persons printed in digital resources. All the samples, total 93, are given for both focus groups learning English as a foreign language. Digital tools by Pearson were selected as a core input for language courses at the Mono School. This toolkit comprises both teachers and learners programs and platforms like Active Teach or My English Lab that are either downloaded onto the PC or accessed via the internet. Moreover, these multimedia instruments were used as the crucial material for developing a new teaching method, Equilibris, that is being implemented into the educational process at the Mono School. The first picture in this slide shows the general view of the Active Teach, that is a downloadable offline teacher's program that provides for screen sharing with students as it features built in both student's book and workbook, dictionary, flashcards, games, and a phonetic chart. When using it, an educator can zoom in or out the page they are working with, draw, highlight, or type the text. When we focus on both teachers and students too, then it is definitely my English lab. It is an interactive platform that gives learners an opportunity to complete the exercises after they are assigned by the educator. Each answer is scored automatically, leaving in pronunciation and writing only for teacher's assessment. What is more, here one can easily track their progress, whereas the teacher can see the results both for the group and each learner individually. The rapid development of mobile phone applications has helped to equip each student with his or her own possibility to conduct further search under the teacher's guidance in the classroom. Bring your own device practice quickly became an indispensable tool in the classroom environment. The skill of word type identification can be tra trained by BYOD tools like quizzes. The same skill of recognizing grammar terms can become a team game in Quizlet. The students can also train this kind of machine matching alone uh, with the help of, of the Quizlet time test. It is sometimes difficult for Ukrainian students to put an English verb into the proper form. For example, learning apps combines among uh, other facilities, training vocabulary, verb semantics, and using the correct verb form. The tool helps to solve the problem of a proper word order, for example, making questions. The students can take their own memory cards in Quizlet, choosing pictures they like, and train the active vocabulary, testing it by matching cards and pictures. Learning apps makes it possible to create exercises involving paradigmatic relations. First of all, classifying words. 
take into account the fact that the upcoming translators and interpreters training is in progress, the teacher can create an exercise or a test involving translation skills within vocabulary training on quizzes. Padlet is the multimodal notice board featuring images, links, videos, and documents, all collated on a wall. The teacher is able to create a Padlet wall with a photo to comment on, for example, topic people around you. An advantage of Thing Link is a wide range of new forms of for presentation of interactive contents. An example of a Thing Link virtual tour shows the communication, communicative situation, airport check in. To prove all the theses that are set forth above, there were surveys featuring questionnaires one and two among the two groups of participants, students and learners. They were asked to complete a questionnaire about the efficiency of digital tools, DT. The results are shown in percentage in table one. The second table represents results of the second questionnaire that focused on before or after allocation of results. Both groups agreed that usage of MMS and DT enhanced their language proficiency of grammar as well as active vocabulary. Both learners and students answered almost unanimously that MMS and DT save their time, provide for convenient immediate access to all learning materials and amplify demonstrativeness. They also agree that it is more than relevant to use these tools under pandemic or in blended learning. Another thing that both learners and students have in common is the DT skills rate of 5.2 points for learners and 9.4 for students respectively. Compare this with the initial rate of 1.4 for the former and 4.6 for the latter. DT skills index has sufficiently increased compared to the results before the pandemic. The new experience shows that provided an educator uses an integral multimedia toolkit of classroom MMS, BYOD technologies, and PMT applications as a part of a course level topic that is being studied, the academic performance of learners will substantially increase. Thank you for your kind attention, colleagues. Thank you. I'm yes. Maybe somebody have questions. What difference between learners and students? I want to understand still. Mm -hmm. I believe that I have to pass over this question to my co-author, Alexei Zinyakin, who is in charge of, of that part of research. Over okay. to you, Alexei. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So the basic difference between learners and students is the way we organize studies. So we have two universities participating in this research, uh, Hapi University and Vasily Karazin University. And we have students in there, and they are officially called so. But at the same time, we have participants who are learners at language courses in the Mona School that I am leading, that I'm running. That is why to differentiate in between two types of educational institutions, we shall call them learners and students. But what they have in common is that they learn English. But uh, these two sets, not intersects it's a different person yes they are different people mm -hmm. students of english their age group is younger and learners of english their age is older but we have also um, not homogeneous groups so we have in the field of learners younger and older participants but they use the same uh, tools, Pearson Educational Multimedia Toolkit. So the input for students is cutting edge. 
the by peers and, and the input for learners is my English lab and active teach also by Pearson. So they are united by Pearson and this experiment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe somebody else have a questions. Um, can uh, these learners uh, make self-testing on the fly? Yes, they can. There is a possibility on the platform when they can test themselves. And moreover, teacher can allocate specific tests that will suit the needs of um, taking single participant. So whenever you see that a learner is weak in grammar, we can allocate the test that will be grammar-based, grammar-concentrated. Um, but if it is a point of vocabulary, then there will be a test of vocabulary. So everything is automatically scored, but it doesn't mean that people are just studying the English language without any participation of the supervisor, of the teacher. The machine can't score um, reading, so pronunciation and writing. These are two uh, language activities that are scored uh, only by teacher. Okay, good. System. Sorry, can I ask a question? And are these services free of charge for students or the teacher pays for the usage of platform and then students can use under the access? So how does it work? It works by paying uh, the initial fee for the textbook. The textbook has a code, a multimedia code, and you can get registered with the platform and use this toolkit. But moreover, unless you are a student, you may also get registered with the platform and use free of charge resources that are available for everyone by Pearson. So they say only by Pearson, buy all these or bring your device tools are free of charge, the most of them. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Free of charge. Okay. Interesting. No any questions? Thank you to the reporter. Thank you. Yes. And we, Thank we you for your kind attention. Continue our session. Natalia Boyko, Irena Khomishin, Vladislav Mikhailishin are present here. Uh, I'm a presenter, but it is not a fresh list of authors. Ah, okay. Sana um, Bilik, uh, but the uh, title of your report is the same. Analysis yeah, of, yeah. of the application of stochastic gradient descent to detect network violations. Please. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. So, um, um, so analysis of the application of stochastic gradient descent to detect network violations. Introduction. Machine learning as a sub-range of artificial intelligence is actively developing in various areas of technology and human life. It is used in a number of computational problems in which the development and programming of explicit algorithms with good performance is difficult or impossible. Examples of its applications include email filtering, detecting network criminals or malicious insiders, optical character recognition, ranking training, and computer vision, and more. For so-called training, machine learning often uses statistical techniques and algorithms, one of which is the gradient descent method. However, when training the model, a huge sample of data is most often used as a result of which the standard deterministic gradient descent does not show the best time result. A modification of deterministic gradient descent is stochastic gradient descent, which provides accelerated learning without significant Significant loss of efficiency. The purpose of this work is to analyze and reveal the operation of stochastic gradient descent, analyze the application of these algorithms in the process of machine learning training, and compare it with a deterministic algorithm. Review of the literature. The paper discusses first order methods, namely methods that use the gradient of a function in the author's work three. The general optimization method is the usually gradient descent. The author of five 
describes a formal description and description of the algorithm for solving the gradient descent method. In his work five, the parameters are updated iteratively in the direction of the gradients of the objective function. Due to the high computational complexity in each iteration, stochastic gradient descent, SGD3, is per proposed for a large amount of data. Therefore, the authors 8, 10 propose an analysis of the application of these algorithms in the process of machine learning training, as well as its comparison with a deterministic algorithm. The result of using a simulation of the usual gradient descent described in 1, 4, 16, when the weight is updated only after viewing all the elements and the accuracy of the model becomes very low. It is described that with the approach gradients are updated more accurately. In this paper, the authors conduct a study with a large number of epochs where gradient descent shows the best accuracy of training. Methods of solving. Gradient descent is a way to minimize an objective function j of theta that is parameterized through model parameters theta in r into the deep power by updating parameters in the opposite direction of the objective function delta with index theta j of theta gradient to parameters. The learning ray iterator determines the size of the steps that need to be taken to reach the local minimum. When analyzing, you need to monitor the direction of inclination of the surface down, which is created by the objective function. Gradient descent is an iterative first order optimization algorithm in which steps are taken to find the local minimum on a function that are proportional to the opposite value of the gradient or approximate gradient of the function at the current point. Here you can see intuitive image of the gradient descent algorithms. Standard deterministic gradient descent. Uh, deterministic refers to an algorithm that returns the same result each time, regardless of the number of its runs. A normal gradient descent is able to return the same values due to the fact that it is performed on the full amount of data that comes to its input. That is, it works with the same input data and also performs the same steps on it without any accidents, which gives the same result at the end. Stochastic gradient descent. Stochastic refers to an algorithm where that returns different values each time, i.e. the algorithm contains a certain stochastic random relationship. Different output values occur due to the fact that stochastic gradient descent is not performed on the entire volume of input data, but stochastically selects only a certain predefined number of records for each epoch. Such a set of individual records is called a batch. Application in machine learning. Gradient descent is widely used in machine learning, in fact, because it allows the model to learn from its mistakes and incuracies. When training the model, a loss or error function is introduced, which provides information about the difference between the results expected and returned by the model. Since we, of course, cannot change the input data from the data set, we must optimize the coefficients of our model. The gradient of this function show us how each coefficient affects the final error function. Applying a gradient descent to the last function after this allows us to achieve the minimum of this function by adjusting the coefficients, i.e. make the error minimal. In this way, the configured model allows us to use it for our tasks. Thus, it becomes clear that gradient descent itself, stochastic and standard, is not used in machine learning. Its implementation occurs only an auxiliary uh, tool for minimizing loss or error uh, functions in machine learning algorithms. Experiments. Recognition by convolutional neural networks trained using stochastic gradient descent. Digit recognition is still a relevant topic today, which can be applied in various areas of our lives. 
starting from the recognition of bank card numbers in bank application and ending with the recognition of mathematical expressions. As you know, convolutional neural networks are best suited for image recognition, which unlike conventional deep neural networks, use con convolutions uh, to find patterns in images that allow for improved prediction. Convolutions also compress images, which significantly increases uh, the speed of analysis. Uh, to implement a convolutional neural neural network, I choose the following architecture, a diagram of which can be seen in figure three, input 28 by 28 by one, convolutional lawyer 24 by 24 by 10, max polling 12 by 12 by 10, uh, rare LU activation function, convolution 8 by 8 by 20, max polling for by four by 20, complete connection of 320 neurons, complete connection of 50 neurons, output for 10 classes, 10 digits. Note, there is a ReLU activation function between all full connection layers. ReLU of X is equal to maximum uh, between zero and X. Uh, here you can see a CNN diagram. Uh, training and testing parameters. The data is randomly divided into 60,000 training images and 10,000 test images to prevent the possibility of retraining. When the model shows good result in training, but then can uh, not distinguish samples that were not seen during training. As an optimizer for training, a stochastic gradient descent was chosen with the experimentally selected best learning rate. Uh, learning rate uh, is equal to 0.01. The training will last for three epochs with a different number of images in each batch for the step of the stochastic gradient algorithm. The negative logarithmic likelihood uh, function L uh, of U uh, equal minus logarithm of Y is chosen as a loss function, uh, which is simple, but at the same time, powerful in classification problems. Accuracy testing will reflect the ratio of the number of correctly prediction images to the total number of images in the data set. Work result. The graph shown in figure four shows the change in the value of the last function relative to the number of elements seen during a poor stochastic gradient descent, one element per batch. At the same time, the accuracy of the neural network for three epochs was only 8%, which means that only about 800 out of 10,000 images were correctly identified by the network. The final error was about 4.2315. Uh, here you can see a graph of the ratio of the amount of losses relative to the number of elements passed by the network with a batch size of one element CNN diagram. The graph shown in figure five shows the change in the value of the loss function relative to the number of elements in with a batch size of 64 elements. At the same time, the accuracy of the neural network for three epochs was 97%. The final error was about 0 0.327. The graphs uh, the graph shown in figure six shows the change in the value of the loss function relative uh, to the a number of elements seen with a batch size of 128 elements. At the same time, the accuracy of the neural network for three, three epochs was 96%. The final error was about uh, 0 0.421. The graph shown in figure seven shows the change in the value of the loss function relative to the number of elements seen with a batch size of 200. 56 elements. At the same time, the accuracy of the neural network for three epochs was 93%. The final error was about 0 0.686.
Uh, since there is no ready-made implementation of normal gradient descent among known libraries, we can only stimulate it with stochastic gradient descent by setting the number of elements in the batch to 60,000. I.e., to update the algorithm weights, we will need to view uh, 60,000 images. The graph shown in figure 8 shows the change in the value of the loss function relative to the number of elements seen during the simulated normal gradient descent. At the same time, the accuracy of neural network for three epochs was only 9%. The final margin of error was about 2.284. Discussion of results. In poor stochastic gradient descent, when we consider only one random element to change the weights, the last function has the highest values of all. This is due to the fact that one random element is not enough to describe the trend of movement of the loss function and the corresponding gradients for all other weights. It can be seen that the value of the loss function is constantly moving up and down. Obviously, with this movement of the function, the accuracy of neural network predictions turn out to be very low, only 8%. When we use a mini batch to cast gradient descent for a different number of elements in a batch, for example, 64 or 128 or 256, the value of the loss function also increases and decreases alternately. But in all cases, it is still moves to a minimum. The only difference with a different number of batch elements is the frequency of these movements. Since the weights are updated with a different number of viewed elements. Uh, at the same time, many batch uh, showed the highest accuracy of prediction, which was 97% for a 64 element batch. As a result of using the normal gradient descent simulation, when the weight update takes uh, place only after viewing all the elements, we see that the value of the last function also falls. But since the weight update is so rare, uh, this movement is very slow, so the accuracy of the model also becomes very low. However, the gradients with this approach are updated more accurately, presumably, uh, with more epochs, gradient descent would show better training accuracy. Conclusion. Looking at the result of stochastic uh, uh, gradient descent and comparing them with a simulated normal gradient, we can see that SGD performs training much faster because only three epochs are enough to achieve 97% accuracy with the correct number of elements in the batch. At the same three epochs, gradient descent was able to reduce the value of the loss function by several tenths. At the same time, poor GHS also show poor accuracy results since it cannot describe the change in weight using a single random element. Taking into account the previous thesis, we can um, conclude that the use of mini parties to case gradient is more effective and more in demand since it performs the fastest and best training of the model. It is all. Thanks for your attention. Maybe you have any question. Thank you very much. Um, have any question? Auditorium. Maybe much better it will be listened when more illustrated. Not oh. so much text in your presentation. Okay, I will take it in my account. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> hard to understand all this text. Thank you. No questions, yes. Uh, then we will go to next presentation. Taras Chaikivsky, Bogdan Su, Sergei Zagorodnyuk, Alexander Bauja. <clears throat> yes. Um, uh, can you uh, see the presentation? Yes, yes, we see. Uh, try to change. Yes. 
try to uh, change. Ah, okay, okay, very good. Okay, yes. Okay, uh, dear uh, conference uh, participants, uh, dear scientists and teachers, I am Bogdan Sus uh, from Taras Shevchenko National University of Kyiv, and I am pleased to uh, present uh, research uh, modeling of epoxidation process by the means of artificial neural network. Authors Taras Tchaikovsky, me, uh, Sergei Zagorodnyuk, and Alexander Bauja. Uh, the experimental <clears throat> research have been made in uh, Lvivska Polytechnica University and uh, some experiments in Taras Shevchenko National University, but uh, all the theoretical calculations uh, have been made remotely in Kyiv. An intelligent the system uh, for processing date of sodium oil with epoxidizing system uh, like hydrogen peroxide, uh, exotic anhydride, and catalyst was uh, created. It allows uh, researchers and engineers to control uh, the epoxidation uh, process at the stage of uh, synthesis and uh, to improve the technology of obtaining epoxidized products. Experiments uh, on epoxidation process of soybean oil were performed. The uh, principal scheme is based on multi-layer artificial neural network for digital signal processing. A clear simulation on the effect of the initial concentration of uh, chemical compounds on the epoxidation process were analyzed by the means of artificial neural network. Chemical uh, scam of epoxidation of vegetable oil by epoxidizing system is shown on the slide. Uh, it contains hydrogen peroxide, organic acid, and catalyst. The system uh, is based on a multi-layer artificial neural network for the digital processing of experimental data. The multi-layer, fully connected feedforward neural network architecture uh, has been selected and uh, special software has been developed. The artificial neural network receives sets of values of variables, uh, in particular values of regulating parameters. A sample of uh, data for neural network training was devised from the experimental results. Inputs cover the initial acetic anhydride concentration, hydrogen peroxide concentration, and uh, catalyst concentrations. It's shown uh, inputs one and three. All uh, at these inputs, the values of the concentration of the obtained substances were normalized to maximum value that was observed in the experiments. Input four used uh, for normalized reaction time and input five for normalized temperature. The outputs of a neural network as normalized values of epoxy number and iodine number. It is uh, shown that the initial values of epoxy number and iodine number depend uh, on the initial value of these values at the beginning of the experiment. Therefore, they are taken as input to the beginning of the experiment. The uh, neural network after training accurately reproduces the study date from a sample of experiments and predicts the results of the study in extended time range, active and substances. The obtained predictions allow uh, engineers and experimenters to select the most promising direction during the determination of the concentration of active, additive uh, and substances. Uh, this slide shows uh, the dependence of epoxy number formed as a result of experiment which is predicted uh, to be formed as a result of training on a sample set of experimental data. Dependence of epoxy number on hydrogen peroxide and time of soybean oil epoxidation reaction. 
the calculations uh, were performed at the values of the concentrations of the input substances for the corresponding temperature. And uh, these calculations uh, are shown on the slide. Comparison on the uh, dependencies uh, epoxy number of the time in minutes on experimental diet uh, showed by, by red lines and uh, studied date predicted by the neural network uh, shown by uh, blue lines. The graph shows the uh, dependencies for different concentrations of hydrogen peroxide. As a result of training, the neural network processes uh, the entered date quite accurately to predict the result of experiment beyond the experimental date. Uh, this uh, picture shows the dependence of iodine number formed as a result of experiment, which is predicted to be formed as a result of training on a sample set of experimental data. Uh, dependence of iodine number of hydrogen peroxide and time of soybean oil epoxidation reaction, and the calculations uh, also were performed as the values of the concentration of the input substances for the corresponding temperature shown on the slide. Uh, comparison of the dependencies uh, iodine number on the time in minutes of experimental date, red lines and studied, predicted by neural network in blue lines. Uh, the graph shows the dependencies for different concentrations of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, this uh, figure shows the dependence of peroxide number as a result of experiments. And uh, it is predicted not to be formed as a result of training on a sample of set uh, of experimental data. The dependence of epoxy number of the concentration of hydrogen peroxide and uh, acetic anhydride, which corresponds uh, to one hour reaction. And it's also presented here on a slide. Uh, this uh, figure shows the dependence of iodine number as a result of the experiment, which is predicted not to be formed as a result of training on a sample set of experimental data. And dependence of iodine number on the concentrations of hydrogen peroxide and acetic anhydride, which corresponds to 60 minute chemical reaction time. Uh, so in this uh, research, we presented a method of uh, finding parameters of the epoxidation process of soybean oil. Uh, the use of neural network demonstrates the possibility of quantitative predictions of the epoxidation result, epoxy and iodine numbers with a small sample of experimental data. Uh, the proposed approach make it possible to obtain additional information about the course of the epoxidation reaction of soybean oil. And the optimal conditions uh, for the process of epoxidation of oil by epoxidizing system, acetic anhydride, uh, hydrogen peroxide, catalyst, duration, and temperature. Also, experimental studies were performed on soybean oil, uh, the dependencies obtained as a result of the research were used for other vegetable oils, uh, for castor, uh, rapeseed, uh, flax seeds, sunflower, and others. Experiment conducted in these optimal conditions uh, show good results and confirms the adequacy of the results of neural network. And uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you for for your support and greetings from Ukraine. Maybe you have some questions. Uh, I will be glad to answer, or maybe my co-authors answer as well. Okay, thank you. Anybody has has a questions? So, special chemical information report. It's not a cancerogenic experiment for... No, uh, no it's not cancerogenic, but if you need more information, I guess Tarashikivsky is present uh, here. He can add something uh, concerning... Good afternoon, colleague. Uh, we have uh, oil, vegetable oil, 
بيخاو واتا هيدروكسيد بيروكسيد اوف واتا بيخاو ان ان ابتاك ات هوم اند بيخاو اتاتيك اسيد اتس نوت كانسيروجينيك اول 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 ذس فيجيتابل از جرين تكنولوجي اند يوز ات وذ ابوكسيد ابوكسيد اوف اويل for pine uh, production and uh, for uh, another chemical uh, part in, in the green uh, production. Mm -hmm. It's changed from the oil, uh, uh, from gas uh, to, to vegetable oil. It's very good uh, for this. But uh, what's the um, aim of this process? One, one, more, one more, please. Uh, what's the aim uh, of this process? What do you model uh, we, 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 we make a, a, a epoxy. We make epoxy. In this epoxy is in uh, epoxy. Uh, yeah. Epoxy and, and use uh, for uh, structure polymer and uh, for another polymer materials for, okay. for okay. glue okay. for organic glass uh, for. Uh, sun, okay. sun uh, electric station and same, same, same. Understand. Uh, but uh, information part of this uh, project, um, how we, uh, the uh, net was learned? Uh, it's not for me, it's for Bogdan. Okay, okay, <laughs> it's uh, for other, uh, for Bogdan Sus. How uh, this uh, artificial network was learned? How many uh, experiments should be done to learn uh, the net, ne ne neural network? Uh, uh, it um, around uh, 100 epochs uh, uh, for learning process uh, without uh, overlearning. Uh, but uh, next, uh, all next time, uh, in neural networks uh, learns uh, more uh, faster and faster uh, when it gets more data. Uh, but the main idea is uh, to find the optimal uh, addition for epoxy for catalyst uh, before experiments. Uh, and uh, it uh, <clears throat> also guarantee uh, for researchers to save, uh, to have uh, economical benefit uh, because all these chemicals uh, cost a lot of money and uh, it's uh, necessary to um, obtain uh, concentrations uh, and the uh, neural network ac accurately uh, predicts uh, the value before experiment. Okay. Okay, maybe somebody else want to ask question. Nobody. Thank you very much okay. for your Thank report. you. Thank you. Thank you. The next report uh, is uh, Valentina Moskalenko, Anastasia Santalova, Natalia Fonta, Yelena Nikitina. Nikulina, sorry. Who will make report? Moskalenko, Valentina Moskalenko. Thank you. Value of shares prediction in unstable. No, no, no. No, no. Anastasia Santalova. Anastasia Santalova. Yes, okay. Yes, and... yes. Okay, but the uh, title is the same. Value of shared prediction in an unstable economy using neural network. Yes. Uh, good day all. My name is Anastasia Santalova. I am a student of uh, the National Te Technical University, Kharkiv Polytechnical Institute. Today I was pro uh, provided to present the result of our research on uh, the value of shares prediction in the unstable economy using neural uh, network. Uh, an important condition in the stable development of any national economy, economy is the stock market. The uh, presence of the developer stock market provides uh, 
corporation this great uh, opportunity to raise share capital of great conditional for the further development. However, is all the other domestic stock market to be able to accumulate uh, investors? It has complied to this principle of information uh, transparency, create conditions for compliance with corporate government statements be producible. The ability to predict stock market movements in one of the factors that make stock uh, an attractive financial in, uh, instrument for investors. Investors uh, then begin to use stock not only as a means of uh, gaining control of a company, but also to manage risk, save, saving, and generate invest in, uh, income. Problems to be solved when uh, investing financially. The problem of occupies for price for recasting is a relation for a special to the stock market. The choose of methods for forecasting the market value of shares in an unstable economy. Using forecasting research methods uh, based on the time chart analytics, this is what happening in uh, essence uh, the effectives of complex autonomic models compared to basic models. Extensive research has also been done uh, in countries with stable economy. The study of protect the future of the use for methods, development in uh, world practice for forecasting the market value of shares in countries uh, where stock market and uh, process uh, of formation and development, for example, in Ukraine, because much re relevant. This work deals with study of the near network using this different architecture to predict the market value of shares in the stock market of countries that are in the process in uh, formatting and development. The many software products and uh, services uh, on the IT market for prediction the market value of shares and other exchange communities, for example, Finbrain, I now thirst, Daniel Capital, and uh, Stock Nero. Based on the analysis for existing servers, it uh, can be concluded that the possible differ in the final type of forecast and inter interface but all options have a similar set of disadvantages. There are no shell in Ukrainian companies, limited set of stocks available for forecasting, hard entry threshold, uh, lock uh, of uh, clear user manual. All services are available only with a part uh, substation, high cost. There is not possi uh, possibility of forecast aggregation this complex in the integration into the daily work of the investor user of the service. Design of or uh, design the architecture is a neural network to produce the market value shares. The following neural networks were selected for external students. And they could have a full connection network structure with uh, four layers. The, uh, the architecture uh, combined two layers of the long short term memory, LSTM plus these two layers on the uh, density class. Uh, this architecture uh, is related, simple, and is a good start to solve in time uh, service problems. Uh, uh, CNN is uh, used to solve uh, classification problems. The post architecture uh, was adapted to perform regression by replacing the softmax layer with a fully connection layer consists of a single narrow. CNN LSTM is a hybrid model that combines two different neural networks architecture. The number of nerves in the LSTM and the uh, fully connected layer is in, in implemented 256. VMD LSTM is hybrid model consists a classical machine learning algorithm and neural network. The development was carried out in the um, Python programming language version uh, 3.8 using the libraries InvestPy, Pandas, NumPy, SkyKitLearn, Keras, uh, Mat uh, MatPolitlib, and VMPPy. To compare the forecast quality of different models for, um, for shares in the Ukrainian stock market, we have selected uh, Centra Energa, CWEN, Ukrtelecom, UTLM, Krukivsky Vagonobudinny Zavod, KVBZ, and Raiffeisen Bike Aval, BAVL. The market price 
of a stock uh, can change very rapidly. That is uh, why fresh data are needed to more, uh, more accurate forecasting. In the first study, this was uh, achieved by importing in the dollar prices from the API. The invest library was used for the purpose by, uh, due to this library process for the period from January 2nd, 20, uh, 2010 uh, to the current data, February 12th, 2022 we obtained. In order to be able to test the model, the data set must be able to um, uh, divide to, uh, into two parts, 20% data for train and 80% uh, uh, data for train and 20% uh, test data. To improve the work with uh, the data, it was normalized this mean max color in the range from uh, zero to one. Next train data has been created based on which the neural network should be trained. To be these several servers on train data, X train, uh, their so called mini packages were formats. In the learning process, the neural network sequentially processes the mini packets and creates a separate forecast for um, each mini packages. Neural network learn is several iteration where prediction error is uh, reduced by regulation the strength of the connection between neurons weight across a central algorithm. The model needs a second list, white train, to uh, assess the quality in the forecast, which contains the actual price values. During train, the model compares forecast this real data and uh, cal calculates learn a role to minimize it over time. In uh, order to comprehensively assess uh, the forecast qualities each model, the following metric will be calculated. Median absolute error, mean absolute uh, process error, and um, median absolute process error. At the first stage of the research, the LSTM network first ran and forecast in the months of 2022 for the market value shares available on the Ukrainian stock exchange where obtaining CWEIN, UTLM, KVBZ, BAVL. Figures show that, uh, that the LSTM network does not always accurately predict in the price of shares. This is explicitly not disabled in the UTLM stock, figure four. Uh, for a cost data for UTLM and uh, KVBZ invasive that impossible, impossible Impossible to apply this method and case of share of signification mark frequency. Uh, therefore, is a neural network is not possible to be used on the Ukrainian stock market. In the second stage of the study, the CNN network, uh, it, uh, as it can be obs observed, the CNN network of also showed not very good results. It can be seen a big difference between the gray and orange zone, real and prediction data. CNN network has the same as LTM big side. Uh, in the case of chop jump both down and up, the forecast error increased greatly. In the third stage of the study, the C uh, CNN LST Gabriel uh, model network. The Gibbet model CNN less model provided to be forced than CNN at least me separately. Uh, significant forecast error is exist uh, even in the um, opposite of shape change in the share price. Uh, Mary from uh, 9.7 to 17.4 in class when possibility, possibility of using in their life and the high probability for finance loss diet and the false forecast. At the uh, first stage of the study, the network uh, all the hybrid model VMD LSTM. Uh, figures uh, show that the produced cost is as close as uh, possible to the real data. The low level is of errors education. The possi possibility of using the model is uh, in real conditions. Uh, analyze uh, the figures, we can conclude that it is most uh, preferred uh, networks for the Ukrainian market is VMD LSTM. It shows the smallest deviation of the predict data from the real ones. Conclusion, uh, research of, of prospect and 
precedence of using the methods of forecasting the market value of shares development in both produce in Ukraine and their stock market, their process of uh, formation and development. Uh, analysis of uh, synthetic source of on models, the behavior of stock market, participant and solving the problem of forecasting using artificial neural networks are current out. That uh, the task of producing the market value of shares on the stock exact of Ukrainian is solely for planning the investment activity of a company is the stage period. The most uh, press network for the for the Ukrainian market is BMD LSTM. Invested activity is uh, considered from the uh, point of view of you or the direction for company development. The future research in, uh, will focus on the continuous research on the choice of, of uh, neural network architecture for forecasting the market value of shares on the Ukrainian stock market, development of a system for forecasting the market value shares. Thank you for your participation. Thank you very much. Now maybe you can do nothing and only using your model for predicting. Uh, <clears throat> any questions from from participants to predict the stock market is very uh, task hard task and uh, very promising but uh, is it possible so build model to predict see very interesting um what uh, time scale should be taken for neural network to predict next uh, epoch and so on mm, uh, how detailed is uh, this window of uh, learning uh i uh... I use uh, time uh, time period in uh, 28 for 2022. 28. Mm -hmm. 20, uh, sorry, 20, uh, 28 for 2022 in uh, figure one, in figure. Mm -hmm. This figure is not numbered and uh, very complicated okay and then uh, you try to predict how uh, long ahead you predict uh, stock market try to predict on the months ahead or or a day ahead by using such model uh, okay uh, now i uh... I uh, can uh, predict uh, maybe uh, one week, but uh, in uh, this situation, it's uh, not uh, not correct. Maybe, but in future, is uh, I I will uh, uh, take this uh, produce it this uh, good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, no any questions other questions beside me then next report it will be kirill smelyakov alexander biskrovny 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 natalia sharonova yes. sergey smelyakov anastasia chuprina who will report uh, smelyakov i will report that smelyakov uh, biskrovny Ah, yeah. So let me share my screen. Please, please um, try. Yes. We see, yes. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, dear audience, I am Alexander Biskrovny, student from uh, the Kharkiv National 
a University of Radio Electronics. And I would like to present the article that was uh, created for the following theme, the building of regression models for cryptocurrency price prediction. Uh, and the relevance of this work is the following. Cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular has demonstrated its value in recent years. And there are now 14 million Bitcoin in circulation. Investors speculating on the future possibilities of this technology have provided much of the current market capitalization. And it will likely continue until a certain degree of price stability and market acceptance is achieved. Blockchain public ledger technology, the underlying of cryptocurrency, is capable of disrupting a range of transactions beyond the traditional payment system. This includes stocks, bonds, and other financial assets whose records are stored digitally and for which the current a need for a trusted third party to validate the transaction. As a result, current cryptocurrency are becoming more and more popular recent years because of their ability to make decentralized payments and other things. In consequences, there is a need to create a mechanism to predict future price of particular cryptocurrency. The aim and objective of this research uh, is a determining of factors which may affect cryptocurrency and creation of regression models based on these factors. Also, there is a need to determine the best suited regression algorithm to solve a problem of price prediction. The Ethereum is used as an example for analysis. So the result of this um, research uh, is presented in the video. And I make a comparison. Mm. It's and... too fast. <laughs> Not on this. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so I can explain in the detail uh, and go through the presentation. So the data was a, a time series data that was aggregated from the different sources. Uh, for example, the, mm, this research includes a different part for our lives or for our life. Uh, I guess uh, that uh, the price uh, can be affected, maybe affected by uh, the infrastructure, mm, different inf infrastructure factors uh, and uh, um, and other factors of uh, worldwide economics. Uh, for example, the Dow Jones index, NAS, NASDAQ uh, index, uh, or uh, S&P 500. So, and this is an example of this uh, data. So, as I said before, these are factors of Ethereum infrastructure and worldwide indexes yes mm -hmm. and uh, to evaluate the uh, score of each of the regression models uh, i uh, um, i used uh, the following metrics this this is there are um, mean absolute error mean square error root mean square error and explained variance and uh, for regression models, uh, I decided to select uh, non-linear uh, regression models. Uh, there were there were decision three, uh, three, random forest and gradient boosted trees. Uh, in comparison, uh, in time for training, uh, the random forest uh, model was the best. Uh, and uh, all of the uh, comparison uh, for um, for metrics that I did mentioned before, uh, the random forest is the best model for 
um, current problem. So I would like to mention that the time frame that I used to um, learn uh, train the model was the one year period. So in conclusion, I would like to say that the experiment gives the understanding of the distance of relationship between factors in the regression model. Also the best suited regression models family for analyzed problem is defined in this is a non-linear non um, regression algorithm random forest. There are following conclusions were extracted. The decision tree algorithm is the worst regression algorithm here. The biggest uh, time consumption gives the biggest error in prediction result. The random forest algorithm is the most accurate and time for training is small. And the gradient boosted trees algorithm does not give expected accuracy result for this problem. So thanks for your time and attention. Feel free to ask the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, what software you used for, for modeling? I use the Spark framework in couple with Java. Uh, which framework? Uh, Spark framework. Spark. Spark. Yes. And this uh, is a framework for big data and yes, for analyzing. But, data. but in Spark uh, exists uh, already um, on the shelf, from the shelf, uh, ready algorithms of these three or your um, design, your own algorithms. No, I didn't um, design the uh, algorithm. Spark uh, has uh, out of box uh, prepared algorithm decision three, random forest and gradient boosted trees. Mm -hmm. Okay, understand. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's all. Maybe somebody else have a question for the reporter. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next report. Kirill Smilekov, Anastasia Chuprina, Alexander Bohomolo, Evgen Vakuluk. Vakuluk. Vakuli. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, I'd like to present to you <coughs> results of our research. Long X-ray images preprocessing algorithms for COVID-19 diagnostic intelligence systems, and uh, a main but result. Share your screen. Uh, yes, yes, can... yes, and uh, main re results of our research uh, present in a video presentation. Now I share. Okay. Yes, and do you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Long X-ray images for processing algorithms for COVID-19 diagnosing intelligent oh. system. Sound is not very good. Excuse me? Sound is not very good. For some, some sound is... Oh, that sound. oh, oh okay. Oh. Metallic. Uh, Yes, effective treatment of COVID-19, uh, first of all, requires the development and <coughs> implementation of ROM and uh, accurate diagnostic tools uh, for this disease. Uh, in this regard, currently, the most common uh, methods of rapid diagnosis of COVID-19 on a global scale is based on the examination of X uh, rays of the lungs. Uh, this uh, technique has many well-known uh, advantages, but uh, there are also important disadvantages. Uh, mainly, uh, this is poor visibility and uh, a low contrast of uh, not expressed uh, foci of the disease. Uh, this is especially true in the early stage of COVID-19. Uh, the analysis of such images is difficult 
Uh, therefore, uh, when analysis X-ray images of the lungs, um, the time of data analysis can significantly increase, as well as in adequate <coughs> diagnosis. Excuse me, I uh, turn off this uh, video, yes, and turn on <coughs> my pre presentation. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will be better. Maybe, yes. And do, do, do you see my presentation? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, the aim of, of the research is to develop uh, mathematical models and methods for pre-processing landed images to in, uh, ensure subsequent effective diagnosis of COVID-19 uh, in terms of time uh, and accuracy. The objects of the research are uh, to develop methods uh, for uh, efficient cleaning and improving X-ray images. Uh, X-ray images of an open data set are uh, considered as initial data for analysis and experiments. Uh, all files are in the COM format. Uh, they are already annotated. Uh, several examples of such images are shown below. Uh, dataset images uh, can differ significantly from each other. Uh, the main differences uh, of these images are given below. Uh, to understand uh, the essence of uh, proposed uh, preprocessing algorithms, in addition to the images, we also consider uh, the uh, density histograms of each <coughs> uh, image. Uh, artificial objects in the image uh, give peak density or brightness, a distortion of the histogram. Uh, therefore, uh, the basic set of preprocessing algorithms will be aimed at uh, solving the problems of eliminated artificial objects and uh, their influence on the image histogram. Uh, a combination of three preprocessing methods uh, is proposed. Uh, first, uh, histogram shift compensation. This step is required for standardization and resistance to negative values. Uh, we will eliminate the shift in the uh, density range uh, to the non-negative part in the presence of negative values. Uh, the second stage or method image inversion and bias uh, compensation. And the third method is image density scale normalization. This step is required uh, for standardization, the image and scale format. Uh, the first two methods are standard. Uh, the third method uh, has been developed as a brand new. Uh, the main steps of these methods are presented uh, below. There are seven uh, main steps. Uh, based on the proposed methods, uh, has been developed software that allows uh, preprocessing of X-ray images of the dataset, as well as a visualization of the original images and the results of their preprocessing. Uh, to confirm uh, the effectiveness of the proposed methods uh, for images preprocessing, a series of uh, experiments uh, was carried out according to the uh, following scenario. Uh, experiment uh, first, X-ray images of the lungs are not pre-processed, uh, but are uh, immediately fed to the input of uh, CNN efficient net for classification. After that, the matrix average precision is calculated. And the second experiment, uh, X-ray images of the lungs are pre-processed according to the proposed algorithm. And uh, after this, the images are fed to the input of the CNN efficient net for classification. After that, matrix average precision is calculated. After uh, the two experiments, uh, we compare uh, results uh, is and <coughs> Uh, the uh, typical uh, application re results of applying the proposed methods are shown below. Firewise histogram of the original and preprocessing images. 
Uh, what about results? After pre-processing, uh, we were able to uh, localize the informative range of the lungs region of interest uh, with a high accuracy uh, and improve the images to make them more uh, saturated and contrast. The uh, application of standard CNN model for classification to such images showed an increase in accuracy by more than 1.5 times. Uh, as a result of uh, preprocessing, not only the probability of adequate lung extraction increased, but also the accuracy of predicting uh, the presence of the disease and the stage of its development increases by uh, two or three times. Perspective models to improve of X-ray images processing uh, algorithms are shown below. There are two uh, main models. Uh, and conclusions are presented on this slide 15 and next uh, slide 16. All these re 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 results you can see at our video presentation. Thank you for your attention, dear colleagues. Your questions. Thank you. Maybe somebody want to ask question to reporter. <clears throat> then it's only about pre-processing that uh, classification is not is your objectives. Uh, our main task is preprocessing because if we increase a preprocessing, uh, this is automatically pro pro provide uh, uh, classification accuracy. Mm -hmm. You could show uh, statistics of your uh, comparison with this pre-processing game without pre-processing game, the how accuracy increases in one and a half times. Yes, yes, uh, this result on one of the slides. <laughs> experiment, first experiment, yes, here. Mm. Okay, okay, I understand. <laughs> Is. Yes, here, yeah, the result is here, 1.5 times. Yeah, but uh, statistics not shown. <laughs> How to compare? It's your result, I understand, that uh, you declared it increases accuracy, but uh, so show uh, how you increase. Uh, about statistics, the da data set is open data set. Uh, it's, uh, we, we take it from Kaggle platform. Uh, there are uh, several thousand images. So this is very big um, da data set. Uh, with each image, uh, we, uh, each image uh, we uh, use in experiments. So there are uh, several thousand experiments without preprocessing and several thousand with preprocessing. And mm -hmm. this is in, in the, uh, result in summarization. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, in, on some images, uh, artifacts appears. Yeah, some yes. uh, special. Yes, many artificial special objects, text, and uh, special background rectangles. And uh, your software uh, can eliminate such artifacts, yes? Uh, yes, uh, we find out such artifacts uh, like a special extremal volumes on histogram, and then mm -hmm. uh, we find out and uh, delete this uh, volumes. Yes. Okay, okay. Understand. Now understand. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe other questions? Nobody? Ah, Natalia Onishenko has a question. Please. So, thank you. Uh, is it possible to use the method of preprocessing you offered to train uh, future doctors to struggle with COVID-19? 
uh, yeah, this is uh, universal uh, unify methods uh, that we can use for uh, our own uh, reductor on some other application. So they, they are implementation ready yes. to use them uh, while this training. Is, uh, this is Python pro prototype. Uh, so th this is uh, not uh, the end application uh, for, for business. Yeah, it's clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. But maybe it should be placed on the GitHub to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. Maybe, yes. Yes. OK. OK, thank you for your report. Yeah. If Thanks. no other questions, we are going to next report. Kirill Smilakov, Alexander Prokopenko, Anastasia Chuprino. Yep, hello. I will be the reporter of this article. Alexander Prokopenko, yes? Yes, correct. Ah, okay. Please. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we see. Yes. Uh, the topic of uh, our research was the um, uh, creation of uh, object-based uh, image comparison algorithm uh, for data storage management systems. Uh, so uh, currently there is uh, an exponential growth uh, trend uh, in the number of uh, volume of personal, um, corporate and commercial uh, image storages. Uh, many such storages uh, uh, can contain uh, a lot of uh, images, uh, thousands, even millions. Uh, today, uh, users want uh, to include uh, some uh, context uh, data uh, into uh, their uh, search queries uh, so that they can uh, efficiently uh, manage the systems uh, while including uh, this uh, data into their queries. Uh, search algorithms must efficiently search for images given the specified information about the content of the images, and uh, such image processing should be carried out efficiently. In this regard, the main problem is related to ensuring the efficiency of comparing and searching images by their content in the presence of a large number of objects of the same type in the image, uh, the localization areas of which repeatedly overlap. Aim of the work is to ensure the efficiency of comparison and search of images by their content, according uh, to the criteria of labor intensity and accuracy in big data storages for such conditions. Objectives of the work are to develop methods for extracting information about objects in an image using CNN, a model for storing this information in the service fields of image files, methods for comparing and quickly searching for images using modern solutions in the field of parallel computing, especially for the conditions of the presence of a large number of objects of the same type in the image whose localization regions are repeatedly overlap. For example, crowds of people. Um, in the scope of this article, we will use uh, image data to show possibility and expediency of metadata utilization for data storage management systems. Uh, most of the popular image formats uh, uh, support EXIF standard. Uh, thus, we will use uh, EXIF metadata text uh, uh, to uh, make uh, the solution presented in this article compatible for a vast number of uh, file formats like JPEG, TIFF, uh, PNG, and uh, etc. Generally, almost uh, all modern uh, image formats. Uh, there are two different types of uh, text uh, specified by, by EXIF, which we can use uh, to write any arbitrary information. We will use uh, user comment uh, metadata tag uh, because uh, it can contain uh, two bytes sim uh, symbols, uh, which can be useful in further development uh, if we, for example, want to localize some <clears throat> stored data. Uh, we will use for our purposes, um, uh, Cocoa dataset, uh, that is uh, common objects in context. Uh, it is a large scale object detection, segmentation, and caption dataset. Uh, subset of this uh, dataset uh, will be our uh, initial data for analysis and experiments. Uh, subset contains 5,000 images. Examples of images are shown below. Uh, it can be some animal pictures, people, cars, uh, etc. just uh, some normal photos. In order to make some experiments, we need to, to uh, find a machine learning model for object detection on images. Uh, in our opinion, YOLO v5 uh, is uh, <clears throat> one of the best uh, 
models that can be used for this purpose uh, because it is uh, very fast uh, comparing to uh, the other uh, comp uh, competitors uh, in this uh, field. And uh, it is using PyTorch framework, uh, which allows it to run on the vast majority of modern operating system using a graphics card for the hardest part of cal calculations. Uh, the network scales the original image into multiple feature maps using a pass-through connection and uh, other architectural tricks. Uh, the resultant feature maps are reduced to a single resolution using upsampling and concatenation. The classes are bound in and bounding boxes for the features are then predicted. Uh, then the most likely bounding box uh, for each feature is selected using non-maximum suppression. You can see uh, examples of detection results on the slide. Uh, we propose uh, to store uh, data returned by YOLO VFI model uh, as a metadata uh, in uh, exif user comment field uh, in format class X, Y, W, and H, where class is uh, just a mark uh, of type of an object. Uh, X and Y are relative uh, coordinates uh, of the center point of the object, and uh, W and H are relative widths and height of object. Uh, example of uh, object data written to images metadata is uh, shown below. It's just uh, some one object of type 21 and that is bare, and uh, that's uh, the coordinates and uh, uh, size of this object. Uh, first uh, algorithm that we are proposing is simple alg algorithm. Uh, the idea of this uh, algorithm is uh, to compare images uh, by providing, <clears throat> by uh, comparing uh, types and amounts uh, of uh, objects uh, on uh, two images. For example, if uh, one image uh, shows uh, only one person, uh, like YOLO V5 detected only one person on it, and uh, the second image uh, with one person has the same uh, person then uh, these uh, uh, images uh, are 100% uh, similar uh, by simple algorithm this algorithm is uh, useful because uh, it will be used uh, as uh, it is uh, lightweight uh, and it can be used as uh, preliminary filtering for uh, localization based uh, algorithms uh, where we can uh, we will <clears throat> Uh, compare uh, areas uh, 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 which uh, our objects uh, are localized on, uh, then uh, we can uh, filter out uh, all uh, images that have uh, no uh, objects of the same type uh, on them. A box algorithm is uh, uh, a little more sophisticated algorithm which uh, compares not only types of objects but uh, compares uh, each individual objects uh, overlap on uh, two images uh, so uh, we are <coughs> uh, counting uh, overlap of uh, uh, areas uh, of uh, objects uh, on two images and uh, we are trying to uh, find uh, pairs on uh, these images to maximize uh, uh, the uh, whole coefficient. Uh, coefficient is from 0 to 1, and uh, each uh, object uh, is uh, treated as uh, uh, having the same weight. Uh, so if we have uh, five people on some photo, uh, each uh, person will be, uh, will have the same weight, and uh, we will <clears throat> uh, calculate uh, its uh, overlap with uh, people on another photo. Uh, the next uh, algorithm is uh, matrix algorithm. Uh, and this algorithm idea is uh, to handle images with a lot of objects of the same type, where uh, overlap of individual objects is not as important as overlap of uh, object clusters in general. Uh, then similarity is calculated as uh, average of similarities by distinct, uh, by distinct types. Uh, it means uh, that um, we will not uh, uh, <clears throat> calculate uh, overlapping of uh, uh, two persons on images, but uh, rather uh, an area uh, that is uh, taken uh, by all people on image. Uh, then uh, we will just uh, calculate the uh, pixels uh, that are occupied by people on one image and then second image, and uh, we will get uh, our intersection coefficient between zero and one. Uh, then uh, we will <clears throat> uh, just uh, take um, an average 
of this. Uh, uh, thus, uh, we will have a similarity coefficient, <clears throat> not by single type, uh, but of all types uh, of an object, but for all types of an object. So uh, we'll have a resulting coefficient. Uh, we will select five out of 5,000 images to run our tests and uh, compare and compare an algorithm's results by execution time and selected results. Uh, we will compare received results to the values uh, received with uh, comparing histograms of two images <clears throat> using correlation metric provided by OpenCV library, uh, just as an example of some uh, classic uh, algorithm that is used uh, to uh, compare uh, images historically. Uh, you can see selected images. Uh, <clears throat> it is bear, it is uh, family with frisbees, uh, it is tennis player, it is a uh, crowd uh, of people, and uh, it is table with food. <clears throat> uh, so this slide features uh, two tables that, uh, <clears throat> that show uh, results that we get uh, when we executed a simple algorithm uh, search uh, and a box comparison algorithm. Uh, simple algorithm takes uh, 0.7 to 0.8 uh, seconds to execute uh, on uh, 5,000 images, and uh, it uh, features with uh, high <clears throat> similarity coefficients uh, because there are a lot of uh, images uh, generally in a data set uh, that have uh, the same objects depicted on them. Uh, below you can see box uh, comparison algorithm <clears throat> uh, execution results. And uh, it uh, only works with uh, <clears throat> a limited uh, set uh, of uh, images uh, that were preliminary filtered by simple algorithm. Hello. The presentation stopped. There might be a problem to this connection. Maybe. I try to understand these tables. What is a similarity? Highest similarity coefficient one and 0 0.75. <clears throat> Why it has differences? Maybe we will. Um, maybe we are waiting for our present minute or two. Yes, we have time. Yes, we have seven minutes for this presentation, and we will. We can wait. Maybe he will reconnect. Yes, Alexander Prokopenko. No. Yes. Uh, no. I am right to him. Yeah. I, I see Sasha connected already. Yeah, oh, uh, sorry connected. for interruption, network just crashed. Yes, yes, no problem. You can show share screen again yep. with tables. Just a moment. <clears throat> yeah, this place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we finished on box comparison algorithm execution results. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, we can see that uh, similarity coefficients are much lower, uh, around uh, 30% for most of the uh, images. Uh, we can see 90% for an image that uh, features uh, only one bear on them. Next, um, tables uh, show us uh, matrix comparison algorithm execution results and uh, uh, histogram comparison algorithm execution results. 
so uh, matrix comparison algorithm is uh, generally slower than uh, box comparison, uh, uh, but uh, uh, it also uh, gives us a higher uh, similarity coefficient and uh, uh, more natural uh, photo peaks uh, for our result uh, for our images. And uh, we can see that the execution time is uh, 100 to 300 milliseconds uh, on average. And uh, uh, picked uh, results <coughs> uh, will be uh, shown a little bit later. Uh, histogram comparison <coughs> algorithm uh, was used uh, as some benchmark, uh, as I said before, and uh, its uh, execution time uh, is uh, uh, 1.5, 1.7 seconds for 5,000 images. So this time includes time for uh, calculating uh, histograms for 5,000 images and to compare uh, these uh, histograms with our uh, uh, searched image. Uh, uh, here I can note that uh, we spent uh, much more time to read uh, image data uh, to calculate histograms, uh, then uh, time uh, to read only some field in metadata and uh, get our object uh, <clears throat> information about uh, depicted objects. Uh, this slide uh, shows us uh, best picks uh, by different algorithms. Uh, we can see that a uh, simple algorithm uh, sometimes can be wrong uh, when uh, object <clears throat> detection model detected two bears as one, but still simple algorithm thinks that these uh, images uh, are similar. Uh, box and uh, matrix algorithms uh, gave us uh, the same image as the best pick. Uh, uh, the difference in the results uh, in uh, percentage uh, is uh, caused uh, by uh, compression used by matrix algorithm to uh, boost performance and to, to reduce uh, the time uh, to make a matrix comparison. <clears throat> well, for a uh, family with frisbees, uh, we can see that a uh, simple algorithm uh, gave us uh, people with frisbees at the best uh, peak, and uh, the matrix result uh, gave us uh, groups of peoples and frisbees uh, that are shown on <clears throat> image, and while a box comparison algorithm just uh, gave us a photo of three people uh, that are standing uh, the same as an original, <clears throat> as an original image. Uh, uh, next images are uh, images of tennis player and uh, image of the crowd. Uh, here you can see that uh, <clears throat> uh, pick uh, made by a simple algorithm is just uh, the same tennis player, but uh, configuration, <clears throat> uh, location of player, location of tennis racket, of tennis ball are much different. Uh, box algorithm <clears throat> found the picture where a person, uh, person's box on the image uh, is uh, almost the same as an original. And the matrix algorithm just uh, found a tennis player that is uh, more similar to the original image. So <clears throat> first thing to mark uh, is uh, uh, execution time. Uh, in our opinion, execution time is uh, fast enough to be used uh, in uh, big data storages. Like uh, it is, uh, uh, 0.8 seconds uh, for simple alg algorithm and 1.1, uh, 1.2 seconds for uh, box and uh, matrix algorithms. And uh, uh, due to our tricks uh, like uh, preliminary filtering and uh, uh, compare <coughs> compressing uh, images for matrix algorithm, uh, we can make them work uh, in a uh, time uh, that is uh, good uh, for uh, real world scenarios. <clears throat> uh, also, uh, we can uh, introduce uh, further optimizations. Uh, this uh, cache recently uh, reached files, metadata, file storage modifications, and etc. Uh, so, uh, similarity uh, between two images is subjective to each person, but to our mind, uh, if we want to choose uh, the best uh, algorithm, uh, from this three, it is matrix algorithm because uh, <clears throat> it uh, uh, returns 
uh, the closest peaks, uh, and it became a compromise between a sample algorithm, which only cares about uh, <clears throat> content, but not configuration, and the box algorithm, which is focused mostly on the configuration of objects. So uh, we introduced also histogram comparison algorithm uh, to compare our execution time. And uh, we have seen that uh, our uh, algorithms uh, are even faster uh, than uh, this classic algorithm. Uh, so we can use it uh, to uh, <clears throat> compare images uh, in uh, big uh, data storages. Uh, for uh, these experiments uh, with algorithms, <clears throat> uh, we had some uh, food uh, uh, for our uh, further uh, researches. And uh, the first point uh, that can be improved uh, is uh, to give uh, <clears throat> uh, some coefficients to our objects, like not treating them as the same. Uh, so uh, that uh, people are weighing more than, for example, ties <clears throat> on the image or objects or some balls. And uh, uh, the next improvement uh, is uh, the use of uh, parallel computing, uh, like uh, GPU computing maybe uh, for our algorithms, because uh, we can uh, split uh, image areas uh, easily uh, to uh, <clears throat> calculate uh, overlapping of uh, images of uh, the same kind uh, <clears throat> on them and uh, execute it uh, concurrent. So uh, this gave us uh, the conclusion that the uh, correct use of uh, metadata and machine learning models gives us uh, a tool to implement some non-trivial functionality for applications <clears throat> that operate with a lot of data, like applications with uh, data lake architecture where <clears throat> All the data is just uh, stored in a raw format. <clears throat> uh, then slides uh, 19 and uh, 20, uh, and 20 uh, feature our conclusions uh, on uh, <clears throat> this article. Uh, you can see them on the video provided. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, please ask your questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions from Participants, have anybody questions? No. Um, I have one question. I want to be a user of your system and uh, I have uh, many, many images from uh, archive and uh, want to use to manage my images. What I show, what I should do uh, yeah, uh, you should start uh, pre-processing, uh, like uh, each image uh, should be uh, uh, pre-processed, uh, should be run through a YOLO V5 uh, uh, model. Uh, it should give us uh, the objects. Uh, we will uh, write uh, uh, object data into metadata of your images, and uh, then uh, you can uh, use uh, your uh, system, uh, you can use uh, our software with uh, your uh, archived images. Uh, basically, this procedure can be run uh, once, and uh, in case uh, if we use our software from the very beginning, then uh, once the image uh, uh, gets uh, into the system, we just uh, detect objects, we just write it uh, into its uh, metadata, and uh, it is stored there uh, until our usage in the future. Okay, and when I have many similar pictures with different names, file names, and the same picture, it is recognized the same pictures? Yeah, yeah, they will all be recognized as 100% uh, uh, copies of each other. If they are uh, identical, then they will be all recognized as 100% copy by all three algorithms. Mm. I need yep. your software. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Maybe yep. other questions? No, another questions. So then thank you for your report. Interesting. Thank you. For the time problem, uh, network problems. Next report, Kirill Smilyakov, Alexander Bohomolo, Maxim Kizitsky, Anastasia Chuprin. Chuprima, identification of model 
facial emotion recognition models. Okay. Who will make report? Uh, can you see my screen? Thank you, Zizky. Okay, please. Yes, we see. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is uh, Maxim Kisiske. I'm a student of Harvard National University of Radio Electronics. And now I am presenting uh, uh, this article to you. The topic of my presentation is identification of modern facial emotional recognition uh, models. Uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, define what is FER uh, or facial emotion recognition. It's a quite new and fast growing area of computer vision. Its main task is to identify what kind of emotion person feels using his or her facial expression. Uh, as an area of computer vision, uh, use of neural networks look quite promising for the, this task. Uh, because convolutional networks show good results in other tasks. Many of the neural networks are pre-trained to the further question of user transfer learning for FER task arises. Uh, because uh, this re will reduce the uncertainty of researchers when choosing a machine learning model and significantly speed up and increase the efficiency of experiments in uh, this field. Therefore, the issue of transferring skills from other domains is rise a little studied and promising. Uh, the aims of this work uh, is uh, to research the possibility of neural network uh, and transfer learning applying to FER task. Uh, the goals of the work uh, are to choose a data set based on it, plant and perform experiment, uh, the result of which will allow to form an uh, efficient algorithm for neural network uh, identification and usage within the framework of FER task to determine which uh, architecture of neural network is better to use as a backbone in a different situation to compare the efficiency of face recognition based backbones with standard solutions for transfer learning. First of all, let's discuss uh, the data set. Uh, we choose FER 2013 that contains a grayscale images of faces uh, which are shown on the slide. Uh, the size of uh, uh, images are uh, 48 by 48 pixels. Uh, these uh, images have been created using an automatic face registration. So they are, the faces on them are centered and occupy, occupy the nearly the same amount of space. This is very important because often uh, face classification pipelines consist of two steps. The first of which uh, is face detection. Uh, because uh, this property of uh, data set, we uh, consider that uh, face detection was already uh, performed and we uh, only focus on uh, face classification. Uh, next one, let's uh, see the key metrics uh, that we um, used. Uh, they contain the standard ones uh, like accuracy and loss on train and validation set, but there are some specific ones. Uh, first of all, initial accuracy and loss. Uh, this metric shows uh, the performance of network after one epoch uh, of train. Uh, this uh, uh, is very important because uh, it uh, will show how uh, the pre-trained weights of uh, networks uh, will uh, behave in uh, situations when uh, we have uh, uh, a little resources to train a large networks, or for example, in problems when we uh, uh, consider to use them in future learning. Next one is mean convergence rate. It shows how fast our network trains. And uh, the last one is the uh, mean overfitting rate uh, that shows how fast uh, uh, network overfits. Uh, next, let's discuss uh, the architecture that uh, we used in our experiments. Uh, there, uh, we decided to compare phase detection based models, architectures of which are shown on the slide. Uh, they are VGG phase and open phase with the standard solutions in area of, of transfer learning, ResNet 50 and uh, MobileNet. Uh, 
uh, our hypothesis is uh, since the face recognition is uh, somehow uh, similar uh, to FER tasks, therefore the weights of the networks will already contain the necessary features uh, uh, that uh, will increase the learning performance. Uh, also, we choose, as I mentioned before, ResNet 50 and OneVileNet uh, pertained on ImageNet data set because they are standard choice as a backbone in transfer learning. Uh, we froze uh, all layers except the uh, last four and add dense uh, layer at the end. To compare the efficiency of transfer learning, we train the neural networks uh, uh, in uh, uh, two conditions. So first uh, is uh, uh, with pre-trained weights, uh, ResNet 50 and MobileNet on ImageNet and uh, OpenFace uh, uh, and uh, of, uh, MobileNet uh, pre-trained for the face recognition uh, task and uh, with randomly initialized weights. So this uh, uh, should provide us a uh, uh, knowledge about how pre-trained uh, affects uh, the efficiency uh, uh, of uh, training and uh, accuracy uh, on the classification. So let's uh, discuss uh, the results uh, that we uh, get. On this slide, you can see the accuracy and loss during training for mobile net and the open face models. Uh, we put this on the slide because uh, these are to uh, networks with uh, quite a uh, few number of parameters, about 3 million each one. As we can see, the uh, pre-trained uh, uh, networks has uh, high accuracy, but uh, on the other hand, uh, randomly initialized one that are shown with the dashed line uh, are over fitting uh, much uh, lesser than uh, with pre-trained rates. Uh, on this slide, we can see uh, ResNet and VGG phase. Uh, the uh, VGG phase uh, shows the best uh, accuracy and the lowest loss uh, in this task, but uh, it uh, uh, learns quite slow. We think it's because uh, we should choose as a set of hyperparameters to train it. We fixed the hyperparameters the same for all the networks so they can show their performance in equally the same conditions. Uh, on this slide, we can see the initial accuracy and the initial loss. Uh, the highest initial accuracy is um, uh, in uh, uh, Pre-trained uh, face uh, pre-trained networks that are based on face recognition models. It's VGG face pre-trained and uh, open face pre-trained. Uh, also, we can see the pattern that uh, randomly initialized uh, networks have the lowest performance. Uh, on this slide, we can see the test results. Uh, we provided an example of correct classification of emotion angry and uh, the example of poor classification of emotion natural. Uh, we can uh, of different networks. This uh, is provided by VGG phase and this is by mobile net. Uh, so we uh, decided which model uh, is the best. It's a VGG phase uh, uh, because it has uh, the best initial accuracy and final accuracy after the training. Uh, so its weights uh, are more suitable for FER tasks. So our hypothesis was right. In our experiment, uh, this model uh, have uh, the worst convergence rate. So as I mentioned before, we should try another hyperparameters uh, to uh, train it, or maybe to add more dense classification layer on the on top of it. Uh, the second model for face detection open face show the level of accuracy comparable with uh, ResNet uh, 50, but at the same time, it has fewer parameters. Therefore, predict fits and predicts faster. Open face has uh, nearly the three million of parameters, while ResNet have uh, twenty-three million. Uh, 
uh, mobile net has a fewer number of parameters, but it performs uh, performance is lower than open phase. Also, open phase uh, has the highest convergence rate, so it uh, fits faster. But uh, on the other hand, it also overfits uh, faster than other networks. Uh, so uh, our uh, general purpose of the algorithm is uh, can be formulated uh, so. As a preprocessing, we recommend to apply phase detection model to image and they apply various augmentation. So we can balance the classes if the original data set is unbalanced and also increase the stability of the model. Uh, during the training phase, we recommend to select a backbone model as uh, VGG phase uh, if uh, uh, there are uh, the quality of recognition is more important uh, and uh, maybe there are not enough resources to uh, train the model uh, or maybe use VGG phase uh, in a few short learning way. If the speed is more important uh, within the task and there is enough training data, we recommend choosing open phase. Uh, then, uh, as uh, in our experiment, freeze or less, uh, except uh, last one, and add a top dense, classific uh, dense classification layer on top of it. Uh, then select the hyperparameters uh, and start the learning process with them. Uh, in conclusion, uh, we uh, reach our goals, uh, uh, formulate the general purpose algorithm, and um, identify which architectures are more, more suitable in different situations. So conclusions are present on the, this and uh, this slide. So thank you for your attention and looking forward to answer your questions. Thank you. Please, questions from participants, listeners. Have you any questions? You solved your task. You proposed. Uh, you have your argumented proposal. Which technology to use? And that all. Your future investigation in uh, this field. Uh, I think. Uh... Uh, the future investigation is to not uh, just use a standard solution in transfer learning, but uh, networks that are trained in other fields and may, maybe for other purposes. Uh, for example, not just networks for classification, but also uh, uh, networks for detection or segmentation uh, with uh, uh, appropriate modification, because uh, Sometimes the features that they select from data may be more useful than from standard solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, let it be. <clears throat> Maybe other questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Interesting work. Then we continue our session and uh, now another report. Alexander Medyakov, Taras Basyuk. Who is yeah, uh, Alexander Medyakov. Uh, okay. Specific of designing and construction of the system of deep neural networks generation. Yep. Okay, yeah, thanks for giving me the floor moderator. Um, greetings, and as it were mentioned, we're going to talk about specifics of designing and construction of the system for DNN generation. Um, I'm Alexander. Uh, okay, so I guess all of you are known that machine learning algorithms are really popular because uh, it's successfully used in many areas in research, in business, in corporate and organization management, and DNNs are one of the most uh, popular algorithms within them. And that's because the DNNs allows user to uh, solve a robust set of problems from regression classification to dimensionality reduction and even generation. But there's a thing that uh, the creation, uh, training and deployment of a DNN uh, requires a particular intellectual resource, some skills. 
but in a context of global uh, globalization from industry 4.0 and other factors the use of custom created dns should be more accessible at least for individuals or small companies and that's why uh, there's a need of study the necessary uh, functionality for a system that will create and teach new network for user and of course create some project that uh, developers then can use to create the software for this uh, system and first thing first we should define some important terms uh, in order to create other collective context uh, especially for such ideas like as ZNN what we think of them when we're talking about them and we will start with the abstract highest idea is artificial neural networks so INN is a brain simulation of information perception then artificial feed forward neural network is a system which takes an input vector x builds some nonlinear uh, function f of x to predict the response y and within that context, in our paper, a DNN is a multi-layer artificial feed-forward neural network in which the topology of two sequential layers uh, forms a complete bipolar graph. Uh, there is a little remark. We assume that uh, those networks use mini-batch uh, stochastic uh, backpropagation algorithm as a training method, and we also focused only on uh, two main use cases of uh, DNNs it's regression and classification. Now we're going to talk about some problems because there are always a problems and deficits when you deal with uh, neural networks, uh, like the climate of amazing amount of prepaid data or problems on the learning process, like over and under fitting, and also a problem of the ready to use DNN, like lack of meaningful interpretation of its learned parameters. And when you build an, a system which can create and teach DNN, we should consider problems that appear on the learning uh, step, like over and under fitting. And that's why our system should prevent some, um, should provide some mechanisms for user for preventing uh, these problems and uh, an advanced and effective way for prevent underfitting and stabilize the training process is a intermediate uh, normalization of databases. And for uh, overfitting, there are also some classical approaches like we can make a loading process a little bit harder or with some difficult, so uh, which will help us to avoid you know, forming some erroneous patterns in the DNN. And one of the most common techniques uh for preventing uh, overfitting with the mentioned approach is a dropout and often a combination of three layers like dropout batch normalization and then advanced or fully connected lawyer uh, which calls a composite lawyer is used as a uh hidden or output layers of the networks and because a real effect of using these blocks uh, our system uses them in every template DNN, an example of one template you can see on the slide right now for a classification problem. And now we're going to talk about uh, another another step. Uh, there's a problem that DNNs are really uh, advantage many inherit some advantages over machine learning traditional algorithm, and because of that they gain a popularity. And because of that, there are a large amount uh, number of information technologies that help to create, uh, teach, and deploy DNN. And we've allocated three types of such systems. Uh, first one are the frameworks, libraries, and systems that uh, require you to write some code. Uh, the second one is analytical platforms, which support the creation or any type of DNN. And the third one is the specialized system for DNN creation. And we have tried to create a design and specific soil system from the third type. Okay, and after defining terms, we needed uh, components and uh, allocated our system within uh, our types. We can move to the specifications design it's, uh, per se, and we will start from the overall concept so uh, conceptually, our system generates a code, cracked code scripts for uh, deep neural networks using TensorFlow and DNN itself, uh, taken as an input, uh, input data set and DNN uh, specifications or specifications for learning process, etc. Now we can move to the formal uh, step of our presentation. It's an object oriented design with UML. So apparently the first diagram we will look at is a use case diagram where you can see uh, the logically connected clouds of uh, main use cases from registration of a user to a learning process per se. The next diagram is a class one. Here we've tried 
to um, determine the minimum set of uh, objects whose interaction and cooperation can fully perform use cases. And of course, we would like to just show the uh, cooperation between objects of this crisis, and you can see it from the corresponding cooperation diagram. And last but not least, the diagram that was presented in the paper is component diagram within its context. We have tried to create a unified structure of a software uh, source code. And now before creating the system, we have allocated um, some requirements for uh, development tools, like uh, support of object-oriented program and speed of code execution and so on and so on. And we have chosen, and also we recommend to use, uh, Dart and Flutter as a uh, development technique and Python implementation of TensorFlow as a DNN uh, began creating and learning technology. And now in order to prove you that our design and specifics are usable, we would like to show you our created system, a new repress system. Uh, we will took, uh, we'll take a look at the example of creating a, a DNN for classification task with the most uh, classical uh, data set MNIST, okay? Uh, visualization of one you can see from the screen. So we will start with first two screens to create a new project in our system. Then from the third screen, you can see an empty project. And uh, after we have loaded a data set into the project on the first screen, you can see that our system uh, decides what, you, what, what is a input uh, lawyer and how many units will be in the output lawyer. And now we can show you the um, how a user can define some uh, properties, like for a lawyer or for a learning parameters, which you can see from the fifth and uh, sixth screen, respectively. And now for the last step, after all configurations are done, you just can run the process, the project, and you will see the standard tens of floor uh, verbose messages in the special log widget, like you can see from the screen right now. Okay, and uh, now from that point, I would like to highlight, uh, briefly highlight the main findings of our paper. And here we've tried to um, to analyze the availability of DNN's model uh, in form of information system. And we have found some main limitations, so comments, uh, in order to create a design a specifics of more competitive intelligence system that can create, generate, and teach a deep neural network. And as the proof of uh, its relevance, we've, uh, based on our design specifications, we have developed a system software. And from that point, I would like to thank everyone for their attention and, of course, glory for Ukraine. Yeah. <clears throat> Remslow. Um, questions to have somebody, questions to reporter. Very good report, and uh, you already done ready system for generation uh, script. Yes, as I yep. understand. Yep. And you only choose some uh, buttons on your interface for optimization and so on. Uh, seen on previous slides it's ready interface also yeah it's it's a completely built system which are ready to use very interesting very good thanks it uh, should be <clears throat> used for teaching purposes maybe. i guess it will be maybe someday yeah i hope maybe other questions from others no questions thank you very much for your report thank you we will <clears throat> look for next reporter rostislav urinets already ready ready yeah, yeah. please share your screen Yaroslav, rostislav urinets zoriana urinets and madia danilevich innovative methods of assessing and the academic success of students in higher education institutions in terms of formation formation of human capital please we see your screen <clears throat> and ready to listen
No sound. No, no, never. I see, but not sound. Do you? Know? Yeah. I suppose it will be video. To paper innovative methods okay. of assessing the academic yes. success of students in yes. higher education institutions. In the article use innovative possibilities of assessing and predicting the academic success of students in higher education institutions in terms of formation of human capital are investigated. The proposed multinomial logistic regression model allows to assess and predict the success of students based on the obtained estimates, and taking into account various factors. Educational data mining plays an important role in the development of the learning environment. The main problems faced by higher education institutions are, analysis of learning outcomes, quality education, evaluation of student performance, strategic decision making, and formation of human capital at all. Different methods of machine learning are used to understand and overcome the main problems. To assess the academic success of students, a relationship should be established between factors and academic success. The following factors were used in the study, an assessment of the student's presence in the classroom, student's grade in mathematics, student's grade in computer science, assessment of the student's living conditions. Log each regression allows determining the group of students' academic success. In addition, logistic regression makes it possible to consider the probability that a student will be classified as a certain group's success. The probability of occurrence of an option is described by a polynomial log each model, where bj, unknown parameters that we will evaluate. x1, assessment of the student's presence in the classroom behavioral factor. X2, students grade in mathematics, intellectual factor. X3, students grade in computer science, intellectual factor. X4, assessment of the students living conditions, behavioral factor. To identify the model, one, usually use the rationing bj equals zero. This is one of the features of building a polynomial log eat model. According to this feature, only the coefficients of the first j dependencies b0, b1, bj1 are calculated, in accordance with, 2, which the first j probabilities p, y equals 0, p, y equals 1, p, y equals j1. The probability of choosing the last option p, y equals j, is not calculated, but determined separately using, 3. The coefficients of the model are estimated by numerically solving the plausibility equations. The solution of this system is carried out numerically using the newton raphson method. The main data for the statistical analysis of the educational process are data on the success of undergraduate students at the Economic Faculty of Ivan Franco National University of Lviv, Table 1. Analysis of the data showed the presence of multicollinearity. Therefore, it is advisable to use the method of principal components. The main idea of the method is to replace highly correlated variables with a set of new variables between which there is no correlation. The new variables are linear combinations of the original variables. We find the connection of the dependent variable y with the main principal components as e3 and as e4, defining all principal components, and rejecting those that correspond to small values of characteristic roots. To do this, we build a model of multinomial logistic regression. The parameters of the obtained multinomial log eat model are as follows. Let's write down the analytical expression for the constructed multinomial log eat model. The resulting expression can be used to assess academic success of students at different values of the factors. In particular, 
Figures 1 and 2 show the dependence of the studied indicator when changing the factor x3, students grade in computer science. For certain values of the factor x1, assessment of the student's presence in the classroom. And the fixed value of the factors x2 and x4, x2 equals 6, x4 equals 3. Figures 1 and 2 show an increase in the probability of receiving a better grade and a decrease in the probability of obtaining a bad grade in the subject of information systems in management, given the increasing in the student's grade in computer science. Different values of the student's presence in the classroom have a great influence on the dynamics of increasing the probability of getting a better grade. We can say that the key to measuring student achievement is assessing student progress by measuring positive changes in the assessment of the student's living conditions and student's presence in the classroom as well as gradual changes in grade in computer science. Figures 3 and 4 show the dependence of the studied indicator when changing the factor x1, student's presence in the classroom, for certain values of the factor x2, student's grade in mathematics, and the fixed value of the factors x3 and x4, x3 equals 7, x4 equals 2. Figures 3 and 4 show an increase in the probability of receiving a better grade, and a decrease in the probability of obtaining a bad grade in the subject of information systems in management, given the increasing in the student's presence in the classroom. Different values of the student's grade in mathematics have a great influence on the dynamics of increasing the probability of getting a better grade. We can say that the key to measuring student achievement is assessing student progress by measuring positive changes in the assessment of the student's presence in the classroom and student's living conditions, as well as gradual changes in grade in mathematics. Now let's evaluate academic success of students through the developed regression model of an academic success of students. Information for assessing academic success of students is presented in Table 3. In the first case, we are likely to receive the grade of satisfactory. In the second case, we are expecting to receive the grade of good. It is only in the latter case that a getting the grade of unsatisfactory would be most likely. It is possible to predict individual learning outcomes to evaluate student actions and differences between actions, to assess factors related to success, to create an individual learning plan through the constructed model. The presented approach has a solid foundation for improving the effectiveness of student learning. We can rely on modeling results to develop pedagogical frameworks that help students develop an approach to learning. Thank Send you. Yeah. Maybe somebody has a question to present her. No questions? Maybe I will ask somebody something. Uh, these coefficients uh, in the last pictures with uh, grading successful and unsuccessful the last slide from the to the end please to the last one yes yes 16 she's not she's not why mm -hmm. uh, x2 equal to 6 x2 equal to 7 uh, number six seven. What means these numbers? Expert uh, 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 Okay. Evaluation by experts. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We will talk in another place about results. It's some questions exist because process of learning is also nonlinear. 
нелінійний процес навчання. Therefore, this model is linear, but the process is non-linear. Okay. It's my comment only. You no need to answer my questions. We will talk later. Це тільки коментар, не будемо зараз. Це не питання. Thank you very much for your report. And are you ready for next report too? Готовий до наступного доповіді? Yes, зараз. Хвилинку. You are invited to paper development of information technology organizations for financial and strategic management of startup projects. This paper researches the development of organizations working in the field of information. A rubbit model approach is offered in which productivity is defined as a close correlation of the factors in the organization. A rubbit model approach is offered in which productivity is defined as a close correlation of the factors in the organization. A rubbit model approach is offered in which productivity is defined as a close correlation of the factors in the organization. Technology in the system of financial and strategic management of startup projects. The proposed rubbit regression model allows to assess and predict the development of future startups based on modeling the productive behavior of organizations working in the field of information technology. The productivity of the organization is the best indicator that determines the quality of financial and strategic management system. A rubbit model approach is offered in which productivity is defined as a close correlation of the factors in the organization. At the present stage of economic development, organizations in the field of information technology play an important role. Progressive foreign experience must be used for the effective development and competitiveness of organizations in the field of information technology. It concerns the issue of intensifying investment and financial processes and the search for new advanced technologies. Startup is one of the modern types of organizations in the field of information technology. Today there is a need for constant management of organizations in the field of information technology, finding ways to influence strategic development and productivity in order to better financial planning and strategic management of new projects. The proposed model allows organizations to assess and predict the development of future startups based on modeling the productive behavior of organizations working in the field of information technology. Regression analysis as a tool of economic and mathematical modeling is the basis of the study. The regression analysis of a comprehensive analysis and assessments of the productivity of organizations in order to make informed decisions for the realization of successful and productive startup projects was implemented. The rates of productive and unproductive organizations working in the field of information technology can receive two values, one or zero. It provides an opportunity to design the probit regression model with which to predict the meaning of pre-built variables in a little piece of time. The probit model allows to estimate the probability that the analyzed, dependent, variable will take the value 1 for given factor values. Tables 1 and 2 provide information for probit modeling, analysis and assessments the productivity of the organizations working in the field of information technology. The sample includes 41 productive and unproductive organizations. The information was received through a survey held in the framework of labor market monitoring at the Department of Career Development and Business Cooperation of Ivan Franco National University of Lviv in 2021. The research involved 64 business experts who work or have worked in the field of information technology. 
The main criteria for selecting business experts are as follows. Competencies in the field of information technology, education and general experience. Experience in the field of information technology, more than 10 years, and experience in the position, position. Staff motivation and capacity, quality and variety of products were identified by survey in reach of 0 and 10. Productivity of the organization was identified as 1 or 0. The quantitative data, net income from sales, costs, on the economic activities of the organizations working in the field of information technology were identified from the survey. This data was used to estimate productivity of the product. Profit model can be represented as follows. There are several ways to find profit regression coefficients. In the study, the maximum likelihood method was used. This method is used to get the parameter estimates of the general population from the sample. The characteristics of the received profit model are as follows. The four-factor profit regression model offers high reliability. Chi-square, which is equal to 56.8 is confirmed by calculations. The significance of chi-square claims that the almost zero probability of not refusing the null hypothesis. The analytical expression of the developed model will look like this. The resulting equality can be used to conduct a comprehensive analysis and evaluation of the productivity of organizations with different values of the factors. Figure 2 Звуку немає. Figure 3 shows the dependence of the productivity of organizations when changing the factor X2, staff capacity, for certain values of the factor X1, staff motivation, and the fixed value of the factors X3 and X4, X3 equals 7, X4 equals 0. That is, increase the staff capacity for different values of the staff motivation, and fixed values of other factors leads to better the organization's productivity. Improving staff capacity is one of the most difficult issues in personnel management. At the current stage of Ukraine's economy development, the problem of employee development, increasing the staff capacity has become important. Those challenges confronting organization can be resolved only under conditions of appropriate motivational basis that is founded to motivate the staff of organizations to productive activities. It is a question of implementation of the forms and methods of personal development which would promote high productive work. Figure 4 shows the dependence of the productivity of organizations when changing the factor X3, quality and variety of products, for certain values of the factor X2, staff capacity, and the fixed value of the factors X1 and X4. X1 equals 5, X4 equals 0. That is, increase the quality and variety of products for different values of the staff capacity, and fixed values of other factors leads to better the organization's productivity. Assortment policy is one of the main objects of the organization's management system. The quality and variety of products determine the feasibility of organizing development. Assortment policy is the basis of stability, productivity, individuality, competitiveness of the organization, if it is properly designed. So, in the end, the assortment policy determines the success of the organization in the market. In addition, the assortment policy is the most important of all the tools in which organizations expanding activity in the market. Now, let's try to assess the productivity of new startup projects the with a received profit regression model. Information on the performance of new startup project is provided in the Table 3. The results of the settlement on the productivity of new startup project are present below. Assessment data demonstrate that the first and second startup project is the most productivity. Therefore, investors, managers, stakeholders, 
and other financial entities or individuals who want to invest in the development of information technology need to look at the first and the second startup project. A profit regression model confirms that the staff motivation, staff capacity, quality and variety of products, productivity of product are important indicators that reflects the organization's productivity. On the basis of the model, managers will have an opportunity to select the effective startup projects. This knowledge is important for investors, stakeholders and other financial entities or individuals who want to invest in the development of information technology. Thank you. Thank you, reporter. Maybe somebody wants to have a question. No questions. Okay, interesting work, but how to implement it, this modeling? It's a rhetoric question. Thank you, Rzeslav Juranets, for your report. Thank you. And we try to continue our session. Maybe I will ask present participants who else want to make report? Because I see that nobody who is in the list not present here. Oleksi, Vesotska, Rishnyak, Veres, Vasiluk, anybody. Maybe we two too fast and uh, somebody want to make a report later by scheduler 17.30. I will wait online, but therefore nobody else present here. Our session Maybe we will uh, make a short uh, break. Break, maybe. Maybe break uh, uh, two minutes, uh, and uh, then not switch on. Off. Yeah, not switch off, but wait mm -hmm. five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Seven, yeah. Even even uh, I see seventeen twenty one. And next report should be 17.30, maybe even nine minutes. We will have a break. <laughs> nine minutes. Okay. Okay.
Okay. <clears throat> 1730. We again ask maybe somebody want to make report. Nazar Alexey Oleg Veres, Andriy Vasilyuk, Yuri Shnyak, Lyubomir Chirun. I see that all these person absent. Victoria Vysotska also absent. Ryshnyak, Matsilyuk, Basyuk, Batyuk, Strembitska. No, I propose to close our session because rest who wanted to make report already done and was present. And now thank you all the participants for for your attention with participants. Thank you very much. Maybe- uh, Thank you for your brilliant moderation of this yes, Thank you, sorry. Maybe too much speaking. And uh, maybe we will meet again and closing, closing procedures after um 1645 maybe something will be continuous yes thank you very much again and uh, see you soon thank you see you thanks for your work thank you too.